Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bargain Bin. I'm your host, Midnight Vesper. Also, Happy New Year to all out there. Um, I'm your host again for the Bargain Bin. If you're new to the Bargain Bin, here's how this show works. For more current slash digital games, we'll be using uh, digital stores like Steam, GOG, Itch.io, Ubisoft to look at the list slash MSRP price. For retro games, we'll be using a wide assortment of price charging websites looking at the loose price of the game. We do not count any sales or discounts as they vary from time of purchase. Hey, do not forget, by the way, that while we are in 2024, Awesome Games Done Quick is just a couple of weeks away. That's right. It's going to be January 14th to the 21st in Pittsburgh, PA. Cannot wait for that. By the way, if you are interested, prize submissions do close today for Awesome Games Done Quick 2024. So if you are a crafty or have a unique gaming prize that you'd like to submit, head on over to gamesonquick.com for more information. And of course, also coming up later on down the pipeline, February 17th and 18th, join us then for a celebration of Black speedrunning talent and Black joy because unapologetically Black and Fast is back. Submissions are now open until January 9th. Use the command exclamation mark UBAF in chat for all sorts of information. And of course, we did just see an amazing Castlevania run by Church with with. The one of the best beards that I aspire to be. I'm I'm trying. I am trying, Church, to get to, to get to that beard length. But if you miss that, if you want to see that amazing, amazing run, just you know, or some of our other amazing hot fix shows and amazing hot fix runs, be sure to check out the vods at YouTube.com/slash Games Done Quick. And hey, while you're at our YouTube channel, be sure to hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hi YouTube, head on over Twitch.tv/slash Games Done Quick to watch our shows live. And speaking of live shows, we have a wonderful showcase. Now, of course, like I did say just a little while ago, we did have some Castlevania runs. So we're going to go from um, slaying vampires to slaying assassins in our brand new, or I'm sorry, not brand new, in our first game of the bargain bin, which is going to be no more heroes going from Gabriel to... Oh no, the name just went uh, went for me earlier. Travis, that was who it is. Young young Bloodcoin over here is gonna show us this amazing run as well with some amazing commentators. It is Travis, right, uh, Young? That that is who they're. Absolutely. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> I have it on my notes here. I legit have it on my notes. I just lost it. What happened? How are you doing today? I'm a little nervous. A little nervous. First game of the year. A uh, little bit of pressure. So we'll see. We'll see. But I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. And how are the commentators doing as well? Doing well. It went pretty fantastic. How about you? Well, you guys have all answered that question. I'm doing good. <laughs> You're doing good. Young's doing a little nervous. But hey, we're here to take that pressure off and make sure that he has a great time speedrunning this game. Yes, sir. So I'm Young Buckcoin, and I'll be your runner for today's burger bin. I'm the current world record holder for this category, which is New Game Plus, Bitter Any Percent. But in addition to that, I'm also one of the best Step Mania pad players in the world. Uh, before the pandemic, I was roughly around top 16, and now I'm somewhere in the top 50 since I barely play, and everybody got insanely good during the pandemic when we didn't have anything to do. Um, besides the more heroes, I dabbled in Fire Emblem draft races for a bit, which is essentially when three to four players meet up and they draft units for a specific Fire Emblem game in Snake Sea Order and then race to beat that particular game. Anyway, I've been blabbing a bit too much, but I'm super excited to be here and I can't wait to put on a show for you. A fellow runner here, uh, Adrian VG, as well as my good friend and Suda51 fan, Sonic9JCT on commentary, please introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Adrian VG. I'm a Suda51 speedrunner. I was actually on the bargain bin last week. I was running Killer7. But I also run No More Heroes. I have a run of every category on the board. So I have done quite a bit of this game. I'm, I'm glad uh, Young was kind enough to invite me here. Yeah, and as introduced, I'm Sonic9GCT. I am a regular speed playing uh, Suda51 fan. I've uh, been a fan of his games ever since I first saw Killer7 in the pages of the, in Nintendo Power. And I got No More Heroes like close to launch, was obsessed ever since. Still am to this day, so I'm really excited to see this game just absolutely destroyed by a world record runner. So that's going to be it. Won't just be a treat for the folks at home. It's going to be a real treat for me. So I'm 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 just as much of like a geek in the audience here, just fan and fanboy out here. So ooh, I'm excited. I'm very excited to see the 
fireworks fly and to pick adrian's brain about like all the little like tips and tricks about how the speed run works <laughs> yes yes um so i think that's about it but i travis uh the main character actually did send us a little bit of a blurb he wanted to say since he doesn't get much strip scripted dialogue during the actual run itself uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, I found I found a letter slipped under my, my door. Here, let me uh, give me a second. Uh, here. I was seriously broke. Wow. Right here. <clears throat> Travis says, "Hey there, gamers. Travis touchdown here, coming at you straight at a Santa destroy. Just wanted to send my warriors blessing before we get this show on the road. So let's hear it for Young and hope he keep back some good baseball." Good wheelies and an even better bad girl. It's kind of, um, I, I can't actually read this word on air. Uh, messed up that I don't get to talk much during the run and that Peace Sylvia gets all the airtime. But hey, at least she smells good and she got me the hookup on this whole assassin gig thing. Anyway, I'll catch you all at the end of the run. It's almost game time, so press that A button and prepare to let the bloodshed begin. Later, nerds. Warm all words right. indeed from Mr. Touchdown. <laughs> Awesome. Cool, cool. So I think with that being said, I think we're about ready to get started here. Just got to do everything up. Let me know when I'm ready to go. Whenever you're ready. All right. We'll get started in three, two, one, go. Yay. Good luck. All right. So right off the bat. One main difference between New Game and New Game Plus is that we make sure that Travis can always run really fast. That is a prerequisite <laughs> to having a solid run, especially later in the game. Uh, I forget, is that an ability you have to unlock at the gym first? No, it's uh, by Mr. Lavikov. Yep, you, you pick you. up the seven Lavikov balls, uh, they give you killer seven powers, essentially. And this is the power of running. Uh, which which killer is that? That's what, like Kevin Smith, is it? That's Khan. Khan, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. This right, game so. will punish you if you mash start. Uh oh. I know. So you're already being oh, punished here. Oh no, I'm getting trolled already. So bitter is the hardest difficulty of this game. Come on, there we and, go. And and believe me, like I said, I've I've run every category and. Even even bitter can just get get me in a tizzy. It's something else sometimes. If you're not ready, if you're just slightly off the zone, it's something else. Yeah, but I know this is the New Game Plus run, and the fun thing about the bitter mode is that um, New Game Plus lets you carry over like all your skills and, and uh, clothing and stuff and whatnot from run to run. So playing uh, bitter mode with all with with your moves unlocked really kind of it really kind of like helps a lot. You kind of get to you get to kind of play around with the cool moves you have and stuff. But the challenge is there, so you're not just uh, plowing through enemies unless clearly you know what you're doing, like Young is right here. Low charge stance. That's that's how you win a lot of situations. Oh yeah, I remember the first time I was watching a friend play this on my file because he had already like 100% of the game. I didn't even know Travis could do this. And he went to that one assassin meeting, uh, one assassin mission near the end of the game at Tiny Alleyway. That's great for just like um, farming money. And I just cool. watched him decimate waves of enemies with that moves. And, and I was like, oh, wow, yeah. I oh, have to yeah. start using this when I play this game. Gold Town. Yes. Yep. Adrian, what's your record for Motown? Oh, let's see, for Gold Town, oh, I think it's like, I want to say I hit 130 kills in that mission. But I can't remember the last time I did. With, with wow. the. Wow. With the, uh, yep, just spamming the low charge stance. It's, but I think it's also, it could be higher because the game is just a little silly in that if you that get it, kills before it counts down, it doesn't count those kills. Yes. Like, come on, game. Work with me here. My uh, record is like 128, I believe. I'm still good. So I actually noticed that from the, uh, the lack of math of slowdown that's happening when you're cutting people's heads off that you're playing this on the Switch version. Is there like any particular reason why that's a good one for speedrunning? Or low times. Or <laughs> low, low times. Lag and load times. I just remember, I remember all those particle effects just really making my Wii work back in the day. <laughs> it, it's almost uncanny. Even, even now, I've played this version hundreds of... Hundreds? Close to 100 hours, maybe. On, on Switch, and it's just, it can feel uncanny when something is moving almost like so fast when you're not really used to it. Right? Like, it really, I, I played the Switch version as soon as it came out too, and uh, 
I had only, I had only, oh, I played it on the Wii. I played through half of it on the PS3 and kind of stopped because that version was a little, it was a little chunky for me. That's, I'm a bigger fan of the Wii version. Can of worms there. But uh, yeah, I was kind of blown away with um, how well it was running because I know there were even some like hiccups with it on the PC version and at launch and stuff. But even still, just getting to play this game oh. without lag and at a higher resolution was was like it was unreal for a game that's absolutely just one of my favorites. Probably my favorite on the Wii, honestly. This is probably actually my favorite Wii game. Oh, and Young is using uh, Joy-Cons, I see here. Yep, yep. You're not a real runner unless you use Joy-Cons. <laughs> oh, well. You said it, not me. <laughs> I mean, is there any other way to play No More Heroes except without motion controls? Like, let's be real here. <laughs> I mean, I don't think the PC runners do it, really. I don't think they can do it. Can they run motion controls? Uh, I think if you... I mean, because people are... Oh, actually, that's a good question. I don't know if Steam has Joy-Con support. I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there's like a mod out there for it. But you can use, uh, even on the Switch version, the original Wii version did not have gamepad support. As in, you know, you had to use motion controls, but they're good motion mm -hmm. controls. But uh, current versions, nope, you don't need them. You don't want to, but hey, I, I also run Joy-Cons myself. It's not No More Heroes without motion controls, without slashing my, I guess my Joy-Con, not my Wii Remote in the air. Also, really interesting that um, you know, with with this, all the goons and stuff like that, you're just going off and attacking a bunch of Agent Forty Sevens from the Hitman series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love it if they added a Travis touchdown outfit for uh, Hitman World Assassination. That would be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Alas, we are at the phone calls, and this game is nice to let you skip all the cutscenes, but it's not nice in that Sylvia gives us phone calls, and they're they're, they're I'm not gonna say they're bad phone calls. It's just when you're running, you don't want a phone call. At least oh. they're nice enough to let you walk around when you're on the phones. You can at least get to the door and be ready to go when it's done. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like a phone call is fine, but like when I'm like look like <laughs> standing there and not doing anything during some of the phone calls, and I see that I'm like losing time, I'm like, come on, just hurry this up already. <laughs> yeah, I get it. As a, yeah, as a speedrunner myself, that's the only time I get phone calls is when you know I'm, is, is when I'm running. <laughs> yes, got it. Nice. Premature Perfect timing. It saves like one second, if anything. But it's the only time that you can tell Sylvia to just like hang up the phone prematurely. <laughs> Did you hang up on me just now? <laughs> <laughs> First boss, Death Metal. Actually, is one of the more random bosses, to be honest. But he's playing very nice right now. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, uh -oh. So, so Adrian, te technique aside, is there are there any assassins in this game you would? Uh, Count as your favorite. There's in this category. Uh, I am also a big fan of Destroy Man. I think he's easily probably the funniest one. Uh, I've come around to Bad Girl in recent years. I didn't used to be a big Bad Girl fan. Now I am. Um, I also like, uh, what's your name? Uh, Holly mm -hmm. Summers? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, do, I, I also do. really like Holly Summers. I do not like Holly. <laughs> in, in, a, in a run, she is a troll. <laughs> in a, that's true. In a run, you don't. We don't like Holly. And hey, that, that was the first assassin down too. That was a good. That was a really clean fight. Yep, yep. He, he was nice. Yeah. Death Metal is not always nice. No, it's funny. It's because every run I've ever done of Death Metal, he always does like that multi like attack, and like I've never seen him only do just like the one slice during a run. It's crazy, but I guess. First time for everything, right? Uh, oh, come on, we can't see that. Uh, speaking of, for the people out there who have actually never even played this game or seen it, uh, one of the best touches of it is that you save your game by going to the bathroom. It's it's a wonderful touch that just, like, really nails home the wonderful, like, tone of this game. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, um, so so much so that I remember when these games, when the first two games came out in Japan, they actually had special promotional rolls of uh, Please don't paper. bring that up. Yeah. Please don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that burns so much. I want it. I want I it so bad. <laughs> it only hurts, too, because nobody showed up to the launch of the first game. So it's like, I know they must have lots of that toilet paper left over. I would kill for a roll. Like a closet and a grasshopper. You need to talk to Maddie about that. <laughs> Get one for each of us. <laughs> next next time I next time I see her, I'll, I'll bug her about a hey so I'm uh, you can tell me about the secret closet at Grasshopper with all the toilet paper. It's okay, you can tell me. <laughs> what if they just got rid of it? Like it's in a dumpster somewhere in Japan. <sighs> that would break my heart. That would break my heart so much.
It's like I was doing an improv like warm up, and I, my warm up to post the group was, "What's an item you wish you could have that money can't buy?" And for me, it was the roll of toilet paper. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if I was in that class, I would have been in the back corner going, "Yeah, I get you. You're my dude. Yeah." All right, first bike section of the game. We're going right. to the stadium to hang out with Mr. Peace. So what's what's the particular strat when trying to get the best times on the bike? Uh, I think Adrian has better routing than I do for bike. But obviously, the main thing we want to do is when you're in a straightaway like this, is to just jump so you can serve your uh, speed mm -hmm. as well as your, um, I guess, your nitrous as well because nitrous does not go down when you're jumping. So it's really and nice it, to just keep it up. And when you're doing uh, r those quick right turns, like or right and left turns, uh, your, your nitro uh, gets, or your battery gets back to the top too. So it was good parking. Yeah. Your peace. <laughs> I've been working on my park jobs for sure. <laughs> it's, it's tough to get the bike clean. I'll admit I'm, I've gotten a lot better at it, but the bike used to be some of my ugliest parts of the run, believe me. Oh, it's, yeah. it's not easy. You'd, you'd think it'd be easy, but it can be very tricky to get a clean bike. No, yeah, you are absolutely making riding that bike look way easier than it actually is. <laughs> no, I was going to comment about that because I remember playing this casually for the first time on the Switch, and I was just like, in, I was just in awe about how the how that worked casually. And I'm like, how do <laughs> speedrunners make this look so easy? Yeah, lots of practice. Uh I Especially because motion controls, like you have to twist the Wii remote. Wait, it's not bad. Yes. It's just you have to get used to it. Yes, I remember. I on the Wii, it was like so difficult for me to do quick turns because, like, I feel like I would quick turn. I was doing the wrong direction. And like on this, it's easy. You just like, oh, hold the hold the control stick where you want to go. <laughs> it's super simple. <laughs> So I've always wondered if uh, kind of like the theming of the stage was somewhat inspired by the the Warriors because I always think about the gang in that movie that's like the, the baseball players. Oh, yeah, well, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Suda is a big movie guy. It's like Suda and Kojima. I bet they could, I bet they probably have like a private like movie uh, texting thread. <laughs> just imagine if those two collab. Oh my god. I hit my nose. I did a demon slash. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, so we're, this is... we're coming up. Yeah. Go ahead, Adrian. I'll uh, let you take it over. Why uh, base on this. Baseball. Uh, let's just say it's the worst. Uh, I, I don't quite know exactly what they did when porting this game from. Ooh! Whoa. That was <laughs> nice. great. Well, thanks for proving. I was about to say this is terrible, <laughs> and you just get it first try. So. Good for you, bad for me, dang. Yeah, Dude, but again, I, but, another part of the game that he made look much easier than it really is. But uh, as I was saying, baseball, you have to use motion controls, if you're using motion controls, to swing the bat. But I'm not sure if it's just me, if they changed something with the porting, but it's a little fiddlier on, uh, on the Switch version, and I'm not sure why. I could get it semi-consistent on Switch. Or sorry, semi-consistent on Wii, but to the point where, like, some runners, even when you're playing on gamepad, the timing is fiddly. And I know at really? least one. I know at least one runner. They quite literally just stopped there. They didn't do anything for baseball because it's technically mm. more of a time game to do nothing than to just keep failing. Yes, yes, absolutely. I thought about that too. So one major difference between Adrian and I running this game is Adrian knows the parry timing like the back of his hand, and I don't. But to compensate for that, I try to round everybody up and just do a charge slash just to get everybody killed in one false swoop. Doesn't always work. Yeah, it's, Come on. Okay. Yes, babe! Oh, no! Oh, oh. I'm still good, though. That That's good. what I'm used to baseball looking like. <laughs> yeah, parrying is a All technique. Right. You've seen Young do it a few times, but essentially when your katana is about to collide with an enemy hit, you press the lock on button, the, the screen will flash. And if you press A at the right time after that, you will get a fully charged attack. And it saves a ton of time. It lops off boss health and enemy health like that. The catch that I'm bitter, they actually have the timing a lot narrower compared to lower difficulties. And it takes me, I'm not sure about you, Young, but it takes me just a good long while to get used to the, the parry timing. And yeah, there was, there was a nice parry right there. Uh-oh. Ooh. Excellent speed getting back up in your feet, though. Indeed. There's okay. like a quick 
picked it up, but I don't know how it works. <laughs> it's like random, apparently, or, or as far as I can tell. It might just kind of be that kind of. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm just talking out of my hat here because I guess I'm not the speedrunner here. But like, I would assume it might even be one of those kind of like uh, Ukemi things because it feels like every like game has a secret Ukemi move in it that you just have to get the timing right on. I don't know what a Ukemi move is, oh, it, so it I'm just gonna have to take oh, your word for it. <laughs> beautiful Joe fans, we 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 know. Mm -hmm, that's where I learned it. Oh, okay. Platinum slash Clover game fans, you you know what it means. All right, coming up on the end of stadium, relatively clean, honestly. Especially like for me, like baseball is the what determines if the stadium is clean or not. And if you have like perfect baseball, it's like you can't ask for much more than that during a stadium mm -hmm. section. So the fact that I got basically perfect stadium uh, baseball live. I'll take it. It's a beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful thing. Sure is. Uh, another phone call. What's what's worse on uh, the any percent difficulty since Young is running New Game Plus with everything, of course, or most things, I would assume. We have the run ability, but this hallway is so long that on any percent, it's just like a slog. You, you could oh be wasting gosh. time, and then you're running down a literal baseball highway or hall hallway, not a highway. Yeah, uh, No More Heroes, it could the be origin. A no More Heroes, their birthplace, the original liminal space. <laughs> you know, I was having plans for doing a new game run, which I've never done before, and you just kind of like made me want to do a little bit less, because I don't want to be r reminded constantly that we don't have the ability to fast run. <laughs> you get it later. True. We've arrived at our second assassin, Dr. Peace, aka we have Revolver Ocelot at home. Ooh, nice. Giant moon back there. So, Adrian, what, that what's is? The, what, what, what are we looking out for on a Doctor Peace run? Oh, we want you want parries, and Young's getting a few of these since Doctor Peace. He, for the most part, stays in one location. So you're essentially sort of you're kind of circling him in a way. You're strafing around him. So you don't want him to do that sort of charge attack where he's just standing there because that wastes time. You want him to shoot you so you can parry him. And yep, Young got another parry right there. Ace. I have to wonder, now that you mentioned that um, Sudo is also big in the movies, I have to wonder if the, the golden guns that uh, he's using are, are, were intentional. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, Dr. Peace, uh, in one book, Suda, in one of the, uh, the limited run games one, he said that Dr. Peace here was sort of based on Western sort of characters that actor Charles Bronson would play. He mm. is very Charles Bronson y. Now yeah, you mention it, he's that, very yeah. Charles Bronson y. I bet my dad up a dinner today. Everything tasted like sand. <laughs> <laughs> like this entire game, like, you know, going up to different assassins. Like, there are a lot of premises with that, but like, one of them is a surrealist film, El Topo. El Topo, yes, yes, yes. I remember when this game came out, and that was one of the things he would drop in a lot of interviews, was um, he was inspired for like, Kind of the premise and especially the structure of the game from El Topo, but this is back in the day before like streaming or being able Real to rent quick, anything off Amazon. Real quick, you'll get a slight dollars. glimpse of Travis without his glasses. Cursed. Ooh, the curse. It's like some weird artifacting Travis. that they have on the Switch version, to where like in certain cutscenes, like like in the opening cutscene, like you where you're in the bathroom with your shirt off, his glasses are on on the model, but if you look in the mirror, they're off. It's really weird. Oh, so he's yeah. a vampire. Yeah, yeah it's, it's especially weird because that was not it was less so in earlier like earlier versions of the game because they they patched this game a couple times not Did unfortunately they? not recently mm -hmm. but like the glasses like disappearing or not showing up in cutscenes that got worse on later patches it's so <laughs> it's so weird that is weird I, I don't get why whenever I see the the cursed Travis sunglasses my my brain goes to you know, Metal Gear Solid Five. You need, you gotta give Kaz the sunglasses and Travis voiced by the same voice <laughs> yeah, actor. Yeah, it's, so. it's the same man. Yep. Uh, Rowan Atkins Dow, if I remember correctly. Yep. Good old Robin. I wonder what he's doing these days. Now he's no longer voicing Travis. I mean, he voiced Travis it. in three at least. Sure, but that was a few years back. He's doing a gruff American voice somewhere. <laughs> 
And I think we commented too much on it, but you'll see that all Young has to do between levels is simply go to the ATM and then run back to the motel. All the money, he already has it. We don't need to do any side jobs here. It's essentially just go to the ATM, <laughs> then go to the boss. Ah, uh, this is the Travis Touchdown Nepo Baby Run. I see. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, Shinobu! I do love Shinobu. Shinobu's also up there for me, too. Yep. And I, I'll say this here, this, I think, is the worst singular room in the game. Or at least one of them. I just, this, I, I, this, I, out, this outdoor courtyard? Yes, I despise this room. Really? Maybe it's because I've run every category and I just see this room in different forms, but... It's like, it's such a big area, you have to go to the left and go to the right. Most areas are pretty linear, and this one technically isn't. And the enemies, they don't behave, at least to me. And of mm. course, they behave to you, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's that patented young uh, corralling technique he was just describing. Yep. I'm a well, corraler. I have that other goons know they're on GDQ stage and they're like, okay, all right. I'm sure they'll they'll tackle me at some point during the run. That's the, the one thing that's dangerous about like what I do is like corral them up and then mash the, the parry mechanic to, until I get one. Is that if you're doing that, you also have to make sure that you keep an eye out for someone tackling you and knocking you down. And this is also a big difference between me and Adrian, is that Adrian knows the parry mechanic like the back of his hand and will parry pretty much everybody in this entire stretch of hallway, which saves a lot more time than me doing Demon Slash and then knocking them when they're down. Probably like, like a second by each one if I had to guess. But I also, it, it's tricky though, so. Oh, you were saying? I was saying, I just now realized the name of this high school is Santa Destroy High School. And I'm thinking, oof, I'm so glad they made sure they didn't put commas where the commas could be, because putting a comma in the wrong oh. spot could really change the tone of high school. <laughs> Dude, there, there's a motto for the high school. I don't think the texture is apparent on like the Switch version or the Wii version, but on the PS3 version, they've randomly updated some textures and the motto of the school is Might makes right, which is such a terrible motto for a school. Like, I can't believe... Ooh, I got my color on that one. Like, that that's why we don't uh -oh. care about the PS3 version. It just makes... It, it's, it runs poorly and it makes poor choices, but gosh, it just adds such, so many weird details that should not be there. Yeah, like they give like Abbott, like they turn up his abs by like 20%. It's really weird. Every, everything looks like it's covered in grease. Yeah, there's a PS3 version. It's a weird outsourced version that Suda himself has basically disowned. Do not play the PS3 <laughs> version. The Switch version, the one young is playing, you want to play. The PC version, unfortunately, is mixed. They say they would patch it, and they haven't yet. Hmm. Yeah, that's part of the reason why you have to play the downgraded version. Are there any other speed differences besides, like... I mean, because I could imagine the load times being similar for PC and Switch, but... I don't know, I don't uh, run PC, so I can't... Yeah, I avoided uh, PC myself because it's essentially just, what, the Switch version except worse. As far as I've seen, there's no real difference. You can maybe make an argument. Depending on your rig, the low times might be faster, but that's we're, we're splitting hairs at that point. I mean, when that PC version came out, didn't it even still have like switch button prompts in it? I think I think so. I'm not entirely sure. Like it's but a I'm, pretty it's a pretty direct port of that port. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But hey, if you've never played No More Heroes before, and if if it's the only way to play it, it's still a good way to play it. There's no there's no truly wrong way to play the, the No More Heroes unless. I guess maybe the PS3 one, PS3. even still, <laughs> even <Yeah>. still. <laughs> I'm a madman who bought that, and I tried to play it with the PS Move controller. Oh, oh no! Oh god! Yeah, it it didn't it did not read the motion control stuff as well as it should have. I am way too far back. I'm sure I'm almost there. I see the star. You know what? Oh, come on! What? Okay. Uh-oh. No, don't... Sometimes the, the down mechanic can be a little finicky. <laughs> we were waiting for the one goon that was gonna fight back, and there he is. Yep. <laughs> you know what? I'm not really worried about these goons, per se. There are some goons later that are complete and utter trolls. 
Uh, mainly the gunmen. I think the difficulty after this chapter starts ramping oh, yeah. up a good bit. I think you could say even, like, especially on Bitter, the boss here, Shinobu, is one of the, if not the harder bosses, she is very, very annoying. Things can go wrong very badly for not paying attention. Yeah, on a casual playthrough, like, on a harder difficulty, Shinobu can really kind of get drawn out, because it's, it's, a, it's a little more in the territory of, like, a Platinum-style, like, 1v1 match. Like, here's someone who kind of has similar moves to you, and there's... She's, she's a high school samurai, so, so the whole fight has a vibe of, like, a samurai fight to it for the most what? part. So, like, on a harder difficulty, there can be a lot of, like, playing hide-and-seek with her, and then, like, getting into the, the face-offs and the parries and stuff. It's, it's fun, but... You gotta, mm -hmm. like, put, put in a pot of coffee before you start that fight at home, kids. Yeah. What's funny is that a lot of people assume she has a one-hit KO attack. That's what she... I thought! I just realized recently that it's, it yep. leaves you with some health sometimes. Yep, so she does not have a one-hit KO attack. In fact, I literally uploaded a video that said, in the title, Shinobu does not have a one-hit KO. <laughs> but it does, because she tends to do it when you're, of course, a lower on health later in the battle, and it does so much damage that functionally, it's kind of one hit KO, but if you have a lot of health, you can tank it. But on bitter, it's for the most part, you're probably gonna die. I mean, I survived it like a couple weeks back, or like five days ago or so. I survived it. Oh, nice. I'm like, what on bitter? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> All right, let's see if she'll play nice. Uh oh. Okay, good. So the start of this fight, I typically like it if she starts with the taunts. Because when you do, uh, you can get a charge attack off really early. Although, like, Shinobu can be, like, one of the most random bosses in this game, she definitely has the lowest health bar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on. Hey, so, yes! Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Yeah, very, very nice. You know, it's, it's weird. I haven't ever done a speedrun without, like hitting the split button afterwards, and I totally just, like, like, <laughs> get, use the pinky to reach for the enter key. <laughs> In there. Well, I did that all, like, I did that when I switched from how I did my splits. I would change it, and then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna hit my splits. Oh, no, I just reset my entire splits, because I switched everything up. <laughs> all right, two down, nine more to go. Reasonably right. good Shinobu. Yeah, that was solid. I'd say beyond reasonably, that was Indeed, impressive. Actually. Yeah, she she was definitely nicer on the on the iframes today, I'd say. True. Yeah. One of the worst parts though is like so we always try and go for charge slashes or parries whenever you're uh facing a boss, what have you. But Shinobu, like if you're too close to a wall, will like <laughs> wall run and then like completely negate whatever attack you just had going and it's it's the worst. It's like, no, I did, I had a perfectly good charged attack. What are you doing? Please. I just like to point out that I'm always really tickled when you go back to Travis's hotel and uh, John is just uh, hanging from the ceiling fan. Oh yeah, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> or Gene, Gene, thank you. Yep, yep. I don't think she's always doing that though. Sometimes she might be on the bed. It's it's random. Like you'll come back at home and she'll be doing different things. Like and then she hangs on the bed. She walks around the living room. She's hanging on the fan. She's just right. all over the place. To me, it's a good luck charm. Gene is on the fan. That is a good luck charm. <laughs> yeah. The only time it's not a good luck charm is when she leaves the apartment. Oh. Tell me that. <laughs> when that happens, is that cutscene skippable? Nope. <laughs> not Sometimes so. <laughs> it's, a, it's a slightly different length, but it's usually like around the same amount of time. Uh, that, that's a cutscene where we're taking a long time to play out, just slowly watching a tiny cat leave the apartment. Yes. All right, so now the real mini potatoes of the run starts heading to Bear Hug Studios. And it sounds like the the game gets like any more difficult like combat wise or anything like that. It's more just the fact that this is when the randomness of the run truly picks up and uh, everybody just starts to say, oh, you're doing a run? That's cool. I'm going to totally botch whatever you're doing. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say that it, since this is on Switch and it's kind of always been very loyal to Nintendo, I'm surprised they didn't add a like a memo into that letter that uh, Travis has read as an akin to Mario 64. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah Mario, that would have been I a nice the cake touch. for you at Bear Hug Studios. Yeah. We this is the, the only one of the few cutscenes that you can't actually skip, which is weird because every other train cutscene you can skip. It's just the first one. They're like, we got to make sure that everybody knows that Travis is getting on the train right now. It's important. <laughs> Pretty sure you can skip that scene even on PS3. I don't know what they did here. Mm. They wanted to make sure that you knew you were on a train. A good old Californian subway system. Uh, speaking of more uh, uh, No More Heroes references, I'm sure you folks all know, like, very good 251 fans who the main inspiration for Travis Touchdown visually and Absolutely. personality wise is. Johnny Knoxville. Mr. That's Jackass right. himself. Pardon my French. <laughs> Uh, I, I think uh, I think I remember uh, Suda saying he was very inspired by a particular scene of <laughs> an alligator biting Johnny Knoxville's nipple, and he was like, "Ah, that will be the hero of my game." <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds... I'm getting trolled! No. Oh no. Typically, if they're, the unit is facing you and you do a demon slash, they should fall down. But lately, on the bus or on the train, they've been finicky for some reason. You know, as Young is doing some forward slashes, it's ever so slightly, if you're in a straight line at least, to like forward slash. And when you're not able to run, that is, you can only run in non-combat situations. Yeah, and it's it's got a weird timing to it too. Like, you want to like make sure that you have like no runs in between with your beam saber. You want to be constantly slashing while you're doing it. I have a special timing for it, but I'm not going to reveal that until later because it's a a nod to a certain other side hobby I have. Oh, oh yes, come on. these guys with the bags on their heads. I love these guys. They're my favorite. I think they might be my favorite too. Very big uh, bombastic Spider-Man vibes here. Bombastic Bagman. Bombastic Bagman is what I'm thinking of. Come on, guys. There we go. So I also don't know if the folks at home can hear the music, but I do want to give particular shout outs to the composer of this game, Masafumi Takada, who yeah. absolutely has killed it with the soundtrack to the first two games and a few tracks to the third one, I think. Uh, if you aren't familiar with this work from other Grasshopper games, you probably know his work from uh, Dongan Ropa. So the next time you play it, pay attention. You might notice it sounds very No More Heroes y at certain parts. Very Killer 70, honestly. It, it, you know, I, I know it's a common in chat. It's a shame we don't do really any wrestling moves in New Game Plus. They're not really no. faster. Oh. Yeah. The yeah, shame. I, I feel like they might, like one of them, like one of the more powerful ones will be one. Look, it might, might be faster if you just like never learned them during the original run. Just like only learned them like the most powerful one. It might. But like because they're always random, there's no point in like picking them up. Yeah. And this is where the trolling comes into play, if I didn't mention before. The gunmen just like to have a mind of their own and just run wild, essentially. The next chapter will be And, and that's why that. I, uh, I always try to, if I can, get them. If they're going to run, I want them to run towards the exit. Ooh, and, uh, step. Yeah, accidental dark step there. <laughs> We don't really dark step either in this. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you probably like lose a lose slightest bit of time from that, like uh, like which time style slowdown or whatever. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I kind of thought that was the last section before this. I'm like, oh, that was pretty fast. <laughs> <bad." laughs> but uh, this is the probably the earliest part that's for me lately. I okay, said so the gunmen. I'm just I'm just gonna play it safe. Uh -oh. Yeah, the, this section with lightsaber guys, which are a lot bulkier and a lot more annoying, as well as gun guys, it's a nasty situation. Oh my god, this this is not looking good. There we move, go. Young, stick and move. I mean, more so like health-wise. I mean, I have like one. Okay, I'm gonna grab the backup health just because we're in a live setting. But like, 
typically I I do this fight with less health and just like I'm good, but I don't want to incur any potential negative time loss uh, just because something goes wrong with the, the boss fight. So oh, it's, a safe move. it's always a good idea, especially when you're yeah. like, you know, the, the marathon safe strats. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if I should do the marathon straight strat for uh, the most hardest boss in the game, uh, Let's Shake. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need every, you're gonna need all the help you can get on Let's Shake. Good guy. It, it, it's funny, you think I'm joking, but there's like a specific part that I do that is like very prone to failing. And it's like a 20 second time loss if I miss it. 10 to 20 seconds. Which, Ouch. But it, it, it's so swag if you do it. Uh, I'll go for it, but... It's not 20, 10 to 20 seconds, it's like more like just 10. Uh, Adrian, how much time would you say crash in the bike costs? Like 10 seconds? Just in general? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that. Okay. Rough ballpark. Really, it hurts your pride more than anything. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if I had a bike like that and I crashed it, it would really hurt my pride too. It's a nice bike. <laughs> It is a nice you get, bike. Listen, you get a really nice scream out of uh, Robin Eckendall if we crash that bike, too. Okay, we're all safe. This fight should be fine. Destroy Man. I, I love Destroy Man. Too bad we don't get to see why people love him. No. Alright. So what are we on the lookout here for with uh, Destroy Man? I find him to be a, actually pretty tricky because he doesn't do a lot of attacks that let you parry them, so you have to sort of work around that. Okay. You can see Young most relying on charge attacks there, simply oh, because my God. Oh, you really didn't have options for parry, and you can knock him down. No! There we there go. You oh go. Nice. There we go. First try. <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> Nobody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I closed my eyes. Oh, I went the wrong direction. You're supposed to strafe this guy to the left. Or to his right. I can definitely see why uh, a little bit of health insurance is not a bad idea on this stage, because I, I do remember a lot of Destroy Man's uh, like supernatural attacks can just really drain me if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't okay. help that he, he backs up a lot. So And he has eye frames when he does that, so naturally... Yes. Mm -hmm. So many hits. I, I can even saw a hit there that I'm pretty sure was lost. So, part of the reason why I got the backup health is because tanking that is actually faster than trying to dodge it. So, but it's it's like you can only do like two, three, depending on what your health looks like. Like the the ha the health that I had before I got the backup was enough for like one, and. I definitely needed it. I definitely needed it. Good fight. He didn't give you a lot to work with, though. No. We'll take it, though. You mm -hmm. got through without a death, which is always a good thing. Yep. Alright, see uh... you in a few years, this run, man. <laughs> yeah, see you in a few years. <laughs> I, I, I do love every time he comes back, there's just more and more destroy men. <laughs> yep. I think in my splits I referenced that somehow, but I, off the top of my head, I can't remember what I called it. Where is Jean today? Oh, Jean's just hanging out in the bedroom. Yeah, see, she's just hanging out at the foot of the bed. She's chilling. She's chilling. So, believe it or not, uh, that was not the most troll you could possibly see. I, I don't know about you, Andrea, but for me, Beach and specifically Holly are like the most troll like things you can easily lose a run to in the game i've been able to, to sort of mitigate it myself mitigate the time loss i've gotten better about it but yeah just this upcoming level might be the peak in terms of just difficulty in the run or at least maybe inconsistency might be the better word yeah the main thing is that holly runs around a lot and until very recently, or I guess two years ago, we found out that she can actually clip out of bounds. Oof. 
And if she does that, it's very random to see, uh, to know when she'll actually come back inbounds. You can finish the fight. Oh, Granted, I haven't seen that since I encountered it a couple years back, but. I was say, we just as got Gina as... speaking from the ceiling pin, so let's hope we have this, this, this next boss has been blessed by the ceiling yes. pin Gene of happiness. Let's do it. Thanks, Gene. You're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, pardon me. This is a trickier drive because of the trees there. Yeah. Uh, I used to actually just, like, go into, like, the very narrow pathway between the, the benches and the trees, but it's too risky. I feel like you don't even lose that much time if you just go around it. Probably not at all, actually. It's probably, like, maybe, like, a second if you just don't do that. Okay, so we've arrived at the dreaded beach. Okay. All right. Trolling part one is mitigated. You'll, you'll see enemies coming out of the sand. Those are consistent spawns. They're not random. Yes. They will always come from there. So we know where they are. It's just they're very annoying when they come out. I mean, you got to give them props, too. I mean, it looks very... Mo they did a really good job making it look like they're not buried in the sand. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh. Well, it's oh. a good thing too on like a new game run like this too, you have the infinite battery because the, the thing that sucks on, about gun enemies is if you're blocking and they shoot your beam katana, they actually drain your power way faster than a normal attack does. So like, you really gotta stay and mm -hmm. repeat when the gun enemies show up. Yeah, show that Ben 2's boss. Yeah, do it! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Carter sent me in the game, guys. Whew, I didn't know how you were going to get past that. Yeah. I'm not sure how you counted here, Young, but I, the way I count out the enemies here is like, I, I think of them as like five waves that come out of the sand. Is it five? Well, I, I, count, them, I count them in specific groups, though, so I'm not sure yeah. how, how you think of it. Like, my brain says five, but it's not quite that. And there's one more, right? Yep. Oh, right as the sand. <laughs> Let's nice. go. Nice. Was there any truth to the, these uh, warning minefield signs? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I've, I've been hitting them recently. <laughs> this, this is one of the more slapstick moments of the game where we, we, you see cutscenes that we're skipping here. But he, well, go. Step to the mine. Oh, yeah, you didn't skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show it off. <laughs> I mean, you have to show Travis stepping on a train and know there's a train. You have to show Travis touching on a landmine and know there's landmines. It's a storytelling 101. Yeah. Check out the landmine. There might be <laughs> one line of dialogue I let slip near near Bad Girl. <laughs> just because it's, it's like you can get past if you mash fast enough, but if you don't, it's just very funny. So, if that one attack for Shinobu is not a one-hit kill, what about that one move where a uh, bad girl, like, faints and then jumps you with the bat if you get an attacker? Is that actually a one-hit kill? Is is that is a one-hit kill, yes. yeah. I, will, I love that kill. It, it hurts the first time you get it, but you can't, hate, you can't help but love her for doing it. I think when when's the oh, first right. real Wait. one KO? It's rank four, I think. Uh oh, w were those, were, we're getting were trolled. What yeah. happened over there? <laughs> the, the glitching of the uh. Yeah, it's still doing it. What's it doing? Are you talking about the electric fence? Yeah, the fence. Look at the fence. Yeah, that's uh, just what electric fence looks like. It's 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 doing its thing. It's getting us shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another mine. Oh. I feel like if I Travis. show one, I gotta show all three because the third one's easily the best one. And of course, the rule of threes means that I'll just make the third one that much funnier. Yes. <laughs> this has been our uh, No More Heroes writing comedy writing seminar. Alright, that wasn't that bad of a beach. Honestly. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was I was ready for a ready for a much more of a slog, but yeah, you're killing it. You know, right where these guys are coming up. No more landmines for Travis. Just sit back, rest, and uh. Oh what you, well. What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's almost comical guy. without sound. <laughs> Wait, is the sound not working for the game? Oh no, it, you're you're good, man. Okay, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. It's just just from our point of view, but don't worry. Like mm -hmm. again, this is one of those games I know a lot of like the the aesthetics, like the back of my hands. So it's like I can hear the music. I can hear every scream and like womp of the theme katana. I, I hear the voice acting right now. <laughs> I can do it for you if you'd like. We all have re Wii remotes held up to our ears, and we're pretending you can hear Sylvia right now. Yes. <laughs> Dang, I, I missed the controller. Oh, sorry, the speaker and a controller. That's just yeah. See, I would have been impressed if they could have gotten it to work with that um the oft forgotten feature of the Switch, which is that the motors inside the Switch are actually capable of making sound effects. It would have been really? Important. Yeah. Have you have you never yeah. noticed it before? Oh, somehow I didn't know that. Uh, I the two games where it's the most obvious. If you ever play Super Mario Party, when it's your turn, listen to the controller, it plays a little jingle for you. And then when you're playing, um, I think it's Kirby Star Allies, when you get like a life or something, it actually plays the Kirby 1-Up jingle through the Switch controller. It's It does it's it a, during the new, what, what was it, uh, Odyssey, I think, as well. Learning. Yeah, it does stuff in that, too. It's, yeah, it's it a feature that, like, come on. Yeah. It's a neat the feature that no uses. All right, By the so way, we have a boss right now. Holly Summers uh, tends to be a fan favorite. Like it's a, it's a, she's a cool design. Uh, the fight can be like frustrating if you kind of start getting caught in some of her uh, combos and most importantly those holes that she digs. Yeah, it has a spatial element that isn't really present in a lot of the bosses, and that there are holes in the ground. You want to avoid them. Young took a specific path early, right when the fight began, to avoid the holes. And when when she starts moving into the fight, which she doesn't always do, moving to the arena that is. It can be very tricky to weave around it, but this is actually going really nicely. Ooh, no! I the Ooh, too Ooh. soon. No! Get out of that that's hole! A, that's a tactical fall into a hole. The first time you fall into a hole, it resets <laughs> with a cutscene. And sometimes it's worth it. it. It it ultimately saves time to do that if you're like half the arena away. Ooh, that was clean! <laughs> nice. That was clean, though! Yeah, no, I was, I'm, very I'm nice. so glad that I didn't accidentally fall into it and I could use the intentional uh pitfall to avoid her shenanigans where you can't hit her at all and she's on the rocks see oh i'm gonna God. use i'm gonna use that one next time i like trip in front of my friends i'll be like oh no no i didn't trip that was a tactical fall <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah a lot of a lot of good fights you don't fall into a hole but that doesn't mean not falling into a hole gives you a good fight i've had fights where i religiously try to not fall into a hole and i just end up wasting time because I'm tr doing these weird patterns, so even though Young fell, fell into a hole there, that was absolutely the right call, and it was a great yes. fight. Yes. Like usually, I save like a hole. I don't have them memorized, but like obviously, as you're fighting, if you don't fall into a hole and you like, uh, you back Holly up into one of her own holes, she'll like stagger a little bit, so you get oh, that's where a hole is. And like I have an idea where some of them are, but essentially, what I'm going for is sometimes like in early in the fight. She'll run all the way across the map, and she's faster than you. So it's just faster to just fall into the hole where she originally spawns, so that you get her right back there, uh, and you don't have to run all the way across the map. It's a very nice uh, save, I guess? I don't know what you would call that. But. Yeah, you can go with that. Recovery, even. Recover I think recovery yes. is a better word. But I will definitely be clipping that fight, because that felt... Amazing. <laughs> well, what, I like to say there's some yeah, cadence to yeah. the theory of like being blessed by stealing fan gene, so like keep an eye out. If you see stealing <laughs> fan gene, good things are about to happen. Oh, uh, I hope we get a stealing, stealing fan gene now. Because we're, we're getting to Let's Shake, and they're quite a boss. So. Yeah. So I actually have a version question here. I do not remember. In this Switch version, does it still play Heavenly Star in the moments during um, Sylvia it, cutscenes? It does not. So in the porting, to uh, later versions, even on PS3, like the Wii version is the only one that had the uh, Genki Rockets song, Heavenly Stars. It's, it's a great song. It is. But but later versions, PS3, Switch, P 
PC does not have it due to licensing reasons. So they swap it out with a lot of music from the, the uh, sort of the remix album from. That's Based what on I was first moving game. to earlier with uh, the bike crash. Oh. I'll take it slow. I always, I always go for it. Just see, we, we're not as skilled a speedrunner like like Young or Adrian here. That's what riding the bike normally looks like in this game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I've crashed my fair share, so. Yep. I can't tell you how many times I crashed the first time I played this game. <laughs> yeah, it's just that. I have a visual cue to be able to get that consistently, but I haven't practiced it in like a week, so... Yeah, I actually you're, you're, supposed the, you're supposed to do the quick turn right as you pass the last post before you get to the opening. You move so fast, you're running dust clouds are still in the cutscene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, if I was an assassin goon, I'd do the same thing too. Like the guy pulls out the beat katana, I would just be running toward the other end of the hallway. Yeah, I'd no, be gone. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A katana that looks like a lightsaber. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm. I, I, I've seen enough movies to know where this is gonna go. I'm, I'm, I'm good to I've, retire now. I've seen Old Boy. I know where this goes. Yeah, yeah. The killer be killed? Nope. We're just running past everybody. You do not need to kill a single enemy in this chapter at all. You know, honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if that uh, the hammer hallway scene from Old Boy was maybe kind of like a soft influence on a game like this because that scene has very big uh like if you put like a if you put like a grasshopper hud on uh -oh. that scene from that movie i believe that was a Cedar 51 game right there yeah, i'm not sure about you young but i find this part a, a little harder on the switch version compared to say we just because the sound design is a little weird with the sound effects they're not quite the same what do you mean harder oh well, oh, right, because you, you didn't do any running on Wii, did you? No, it's funny you bring that up, because I'll bring that up later, but, like, I didn't start running this game until about two years ago, and I'm glad I waited, because the Wii load times are atrocious. But originally, I messaged Adrian on YouTube when YouTube DMs were still a thing, and I was, like, asking for advice about getting into speedrunning this game. But I never actually followed through until the Switch port came. I'm like, yeah, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. <laughs> the load times are nice. I think yeah, I actually remember when you did that, too. I guess I'm speaking as an, as an old timer here. I've been running this game for about 10 years, maybe? 11 years? So the, there's there's some uh, wonky stuff with the Switch version. I think it's still a, a, a very good version. It's But it's, I'd, I'd say it's 90% there. And some of the sound design is a little messed up. Like, the sound effects here don't quite uh, sound right, and there's some weird, like, interruptions and cutting out. And since I'm so used to the Wii version, I'm still, like, I find this part harder personally, but I guess that's just a me thing. So if someone oh, watching no. at home wanted to maybe get started on speed rain and we're here, okay. is there anywhere you guys maybe suggest starting? I'm just not going to do beam slashes anymore, because <laughs> we're basically <laughs> at the end of this hallway. <laughs> If, so I, I just, I just want to point out, if this was a Wii U version, that that me, you said that would have been a me thing, that would have been a great joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but okay. we're coming up to the boss. Let's shake. Okay, guys, I'm going to need some moment of silence after this phone call. I think we should all just not say anything. Yeah, I do want to say that I've run, I, I've done a run of every category on the board. This, this boss is the most consistent boss in the game which consistent but which very difficult good, yeah good parts and bad parts of that yeah but, uh, this is uh interesting that this is the only section in the game where you just run in a straight line before the boss fight <laughs> or a relatively straight line you need that tension yeah it's just an infinite liminal space. I mean, we gotta maintain a steady tempo. We oui? know what I mean? The one French word she speaks in the game. Oh, is that really the one French word? <laughs> in this game, yes. <laughs> All right, guys. It's quiet. Wait. What? I thought, I thought there was a, a boss here. Wow, that was even that was even harder than that electric fence back there. 
Uh, Good job, man. Oh, I, I guess we got a freebie. <laughs> hey, all right. Pr proud all of right. you. Woo. All right, so I know we're supposed to be doing a break sometime, right? Yeah. This would be a good breaking point, if anything. Okay, we can go ahead and just, if, this, if that's the case, we can just pause here. Yep. All right. Uh, so uh, we can all get water and do what Travis is doing. <laughs> let's all go save our games. <laughs> let's all go save our games. It's 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 perfect. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go take a small little break where we go off and uh, get some stuff. This is a good time to uh, hydrate. We like to take these breaks to make sure everything everyone gets hydrated, make sure everyone's healthy the best we possibly can. And of course, uh, do not forget that um, I'm looking at my channel here. Your subs, Camp Prime Gaming subs, give subs and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel. Help support get games on Quick Hotfix. If you enjoy watching the speed runs daily, consider subscribing to the channel. Like I said, this is a time for us to kind of get up, stretch, get some water, get a snack, you know, stay healthy as possibly can. And we're going to be right back with more No More Heroes. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the bargain bin. I'm still your host, Midnight Vesper. Hey, do not forget in a couple of weeks is Awesome Games Done Quick 2024. It's going to be January 14th to the 21st in Pittsburgh, PA. Prize submissions are live and end today. So if you are crafty and have a unique gaming prize and would like to submit anything along those lines, head on over to gamesunquick.com for more info. And of course, also do not forget... February, join us February 17th and 18th for a celebration of Black Speedrunning Talent and Black Joy because unapologetically Black and Fast is back. Submissions are open for UBAF through January 9th. Use the command exclamation mark UBAF in chat for more information. But now let's go ahead and kick things back to Young Boy Coin for more, no more heroes to showcase the rest of this amazing run. All right, welcome back. So when we left Travis, he was... Uh, I don't know what he's doing exactly. <laughs> All right, so... It'd just be like that go, some days, though. Yeah, it'd it be like that. Whenever he's on the Something job, it doesn't matter if he's in his house or in the porta potty or the stadium bathrooms, he's always just pondering life. He's like, why am I doing this? What is going on? <laughs> so I guess we'll do a three, two, one, go. All right, three, two, one, go. So when you started, this game was No More Heroes, and we're back for the break. It's no, comma, more heroes? <laughs> <laughs> Please just make it end. <laughs> we did get a gene on the All right, there. blessings, blessings. I oh, I'm, always, I'm always there. I'm always <laughs> noticing when Gene's on the fan. My eyes. Right now, on. I'm making IRL pray emoji hands. <laughs> Uh, and I definitely need them. So, like, earlier we were, like, definitely, like, playing the fact that there's no boss fight for Dr. Let's Shake. But this is... Harvey definitely... Harvey and Holly, the two people that start with an H, they can go to heck because they troll the heck out of your run. Uh, they can... Super inconsistent fights. I think during my PB run which is the world record it i it's like a 220 minute fight my fastest is like 125 and it's just harvey specifically you'll you'll get to see it but he teleports around the stadium it's not a, not a nice guy in my book <laughs> yeah, i thoroughly was... enjoy how I, I, they, they've done so much this game like they remastered it to like that they still gave travis a nice crt television <laughs> like the so like the completely old school ZRD where you have to walk up and adjust the knobs. He he has an N sixty four on the Switch version, Wii versions. He has an N sixty four in his room behind you. Wow! Did they change it in the PS three version to anything else? Yes, it's a Tower of Power. It's a Genesis. Oh, uh, beautiful! Oh. <laughs> on the PS three, thereby taking place in a completely different universe. An, an alternate universe wherein Travis is a Sega nerd. A better universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ouch. So, Look, so, like, now, so, now we know Sonic yeah. so now we know the plot of No More Heroes 4, where Travis will go up against Travis. 
That's if we get one. They have kind of alluded to something at the end of three, but I don't know. I feel like that was more like opening for DLC. And Suda was like, no, we're not doing anything with Travis for a long time, as far as I can remember. Yeah, they don't have the creative rights to uh, the series anymore. Really? Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah the contract, I believe it was marvelous. I believe it ended, uh, my dates, uh, what are they? At, at, at the end of 2021? I think right after No More Heroes 3 release. Uh, my, my dates might be wrong, but they know they... I'm out of Trails here. is a small company, so... Well, they they tend it. not to hold their rights. Like, they don't own the rights to Killer7, either. Yeah, but luckily, they seem to have a good track record, at least, with, like... So I guess they, must, they had to have called in some favors at Capcom to get that, uh... Killer7 release done, because I know Capcom didn't publish it, but the, it was, like, Mista, I think, published it in America, I think? I don't remember. Yeah, but, something um, like that. It's... They still, of course, still, they need to ask Capcom for permission, but... But hey, it worked out. Mr. And Capcom hey, was nice. And hey, they put in the work and they did get back the rights to Shadows of the Damned. I don't know if they have the rights to Lollipop Chainsaw or if that, it, again, is just like called in uh, they, favor. They don't. Lollipop Chainsaw is uh, being remastered by a totally different developer. I'm still, okay, I'm still I was about to say, to I, I remember hearing, I couldn't remember if, it, if the remaster came out or not. Because I no, was just about no. to ask, but I heard it somewhere that it was... Because I, I didn't get a uh -oh. chance to play it when it first came out. There he it's, goes. Uh, there uh -oh. he goes. Meanwhile, during the run, enemies are being annoying. There are gun enemies and some lightsaber enemies at the end. It, mostly the gun enemies, though, and they have a terrible tendency to run back, and that's what happened here. Yay! Oh, this one's re now he's being really mean right now. I've never seen him go this far. You know what? Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. Game recognized game. He really put up a good fight. Going into the subway, and now genre switch. I'm always really surprised they never actually did a full on spinoff solo game of this. This shmup actually feels pretty good. I'm not a huge shmup person, but at least as a casual fan of a few, it doesn't feel bad at all. I mean, like, there's definitely like a lot of influence of kind of like what's going on in some of like the indie shmup space at this time. Like, I don't know if I'd be so quick to say specifically mm -hmm. like Oho, but definitely like in the sh in the in like the indie PC shmup uh, community and stuff, especially stuff that was kind of starting to make it to like. PSN at that time. I'm not like a hardcore, hardcore shmup guy, but I am a big shmup fan, so it's like, it was always kind of cool seeing uh, kind of like very cool homages to kind of like shmups and whatnot. Honestly, it's kind of has a bit of like a Raddergy vibe to it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Raddergy. Very good shmup. How do you feel about the shmup yourself, Young? Not a fan. <laughs> hey, <laughs> at least you can just swipe away the bullets. Uh, to me, it just feels weird on a Joy-Con because you don't have a real D-pad. Mm. You would turn your Wii remote to the side, <laughs> take up the nunchuck. It's just not the same. That's right. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Not the same. Maybe if I put my Joy-Con sideways. Oh, you can use the D-pad at the bottom. I just give it a try. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> oh yeah, it's more. Of, I guess I guess I'm saying it's more like the tactile feel. Yeah. Like uh, you know, having two controllers in your hand as opposed to the one solid brick in your hand. You know, this almost looks like a WarioWare game, honestly. <laughs> yeah, there's really not too much to say. You can technically save some time by like mashing a bit. That's not too useful until like the end with the boss of the shmup. Yes. So you don't really want to like just I don't know, give yourself cramps in your in your wrist for no good benefit. If I die to the bullets coming up, I'm gonna be taking some intentional deaths such that uh, I can get a power-up before the boss and hopefully keep it during the entire time. Yep, it's a pity power-up if you game over. We take those. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if you die in the shmup, it, I, you only lose time insofar as if you lose a power when you need it, but dying is basically a slap on the wrist. It doesn't really hurt you that much. Am, am I having a Berenstein Bears memory, or was there like a fully animated intro for this game in the second game? Uh, they're, they're, yeah, the, the, the shmup in No More Heroes 2 does have an intro. Okay, I thought oh, so. Oh, well. So, I didn't get to get the proper death beforehand, so I'm not going to waste any time with it. I'm just going to... I'm just going to do the boss without mm -hmm. the additional power-up. 
Oh, am I one? I was one short. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So there is a one piece of tech here too. There's a sort of black hole special attack that you can get from swiping bullets once you get your enough charge. And what that does is it gets rid of all the bullets on the screen. Since we're playing, since Young is playing on the Switch version, it's not very laggy. There's no lag whatsoever, even here. And it's again very surreal to me I, I, playing this without lag. I kind of wish they hard coded it in because, like, that's the thing about a lot of uh, retro shmups is the hardware they run on. There's a lot of slowdown to it, but that 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 helps make games like Gradius and R Type like actually manageable. Where if you play those games with zero lag whatsoever, they kind of become unplayable because they're built around almost like planning for that amount of slowdown. <laughs> in Ikaruga, there's only lag when the when you kill the boss. So only after the boss is dead. So no, you're oh, not shooting, said the but it's the not magic, the same if you don't have the magic word to, lagging. You said the magic word to warm up my heart, Ikaruga. I'm a huge Ikaruga fan over here. Uh. Um, yeah, it's, it's the one shmup that I'm really into. This is the only phone call you get from Sylvia where she's cheering you. Oh, actually, no, the second one, never mind. The first phone call you get and this one. she's, But this one, she's like unabashedly like cheering you on the entire time. I think it's because you're going on a date with her. You know, assassin fight, date, same thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> as soon as you are ready, come for me. Don't I see in chat, that it's funny you say the holy hand grenade, because you are not the first person who has said that the boss there looks like the holy hand grenade. <laughs> and with being a movie so buff, I wouldn't for a that would be that. thrown against. I mean... <laughs> Let's go to the grasshopper screening of Monty Python. <laughs> No, yeah. no more heroes for the the Don't boss. The main boss of the entire game is just like a bunny a rabbit. And will you look at yeah, that? so Harvey <laughs> is a tough boss here. Well, we'll He's not see necessarily how tough. He's just uh, honestly the toughest boss I think still is yet to come with uh, Speedbuster. True. I, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm just trying to think of the order. We yes. might not even see it depending on uh, how the how the fight goes. I mean, I won't die to the insta kill here. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I, it's easy to avoid. Yeah. Watch this. Oh. Oh. Uh, Young said this okay. earlier. He likes to teleport. I've never seen him teleport. Well, I don't want to say never, but I rarely see him teleport right off the bat. He usually, mm -hmm. sends pigeons your way. And he's not giving him very nice teleports here either. Sucker for a magician in a game, though, that's for sure. <laughs> this is a fight where you really cannot use parries at all. He gives so few attack patterns yeah. that let you parry. You essentially just have to, well, basically just pray. You have to charge and hope he teleports near you a lot of the time. There's some, of course, some strategy, but when he teleports and it's random, what can you do? Is he supposed to be kind of like a knockoff Chris Angel? Sure. Mm, he's, a, <laughs> I, he's, a little, uh, he's a little flamboyant for Chris Angel. He might be even more of like a... Who's the other Who's the other guy? The, um, he, it's, I think David it's a, Copperfield. He's meant to, I was going to say, I think it's meant to be explicitly a David Copperfield reference. Okay, I was close. I was close. <laughs> yeah, you were close. Oh, and hey, Young actually avoided the QTE attack, which would trigger the one at KO. You run, nice. Once the spotlight is there, you just run away from the spotlight. Don't get in the spotlight. It's not a hundred percent. Like you can still like attempt to run away, and it'll still get you anyway, even though you're like not really in the spotlight. But I thought I would go for it. I don't know if it actually saves any time. <laughs> I just feel like mm -hmm. if something to show off during the run that players may not actually know about casually is that you can actually uh -huh. skip that. Mm. And that wasn't too bad of a fight. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Not the I'll worst be. teleports I've seen. Not good okay. teleports. No, not good teleports. Definitely not. The not best good. teleports is when you have the charge and he teleports right in front of you, and you can right. just get him right right away. Basically, that's what you want. Yeah. So that basically ends the hard part of the run. Like now Dude, we're going seems... to, or the hard part, the the most troll or randomness to the run. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's some more trolling uh, during Stadium Two because of enemy health, on bitter, but. Other than that, it's pretty consistent from this point out. Yeah, 
that whenever I have to recollect all the assassins in this game, I always forget Harvey in my count. He feels like a number hero is too boss to me, but it's definitely the first game. So when you go to the ATM, every time you go to the ATM, I notice you don't use the bike. Is it just because, I mean, I assume it's because it's obviously faster, but is it, is it, is there any other mechanics in there? Is it just, um, no, it's really just a speed thing. Like, cause it would be faster if getting on off the bike was fast, but like, mm -hmm. short like distance. You have to, it's a short distance to get on and off the bike. And you also like have to redirect which way you're going on the bike as well. Cause you could go, you go one direction, you got to turn it around and do the other direction. So it might be faster if like Travis could just like do like a quick one of those and like be ready to go. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's not like that, unfortunately. And, and that's, percent, that's a huge F. Mm -hmm. yeah, and any percent of the way it's routed, you tend to pay the ATM when you're actually, you know, having to do jobs, you tend to route around that. But even then there are times where you, we, by the time we get running, we would do the same thing. So yeah, it's just, it's such a short distance. If you have running, you may as well run. Yeah, hey, I noticed the cat. <laughs> it was heading out the door, right? I, I, I always notice the, the cat. You can't end this on me. <laughs> All right. So now we're going against the Yakuza, I would assume. Like... See, this is actually one of my favorite areas in the game because the enemies are so consistent. Yes. And they're very aggressive, and that's a good thing to get parries. Yes. You don't need to wait around as much and mash the lock on button. They are very consistent. Like that one guy who was blocking the path behind the bus, like he always, like literally always, like attempts to attack you. So you could parry if you knew the timing. And there's not just a pause for getting punished for. And this is a weird, a weird bit with the camera. You, yes. you saw it sort of flashing like back and forth. That's just something on the Switch version. Flash PC, of course. It didn't do that funkiness on the Wii version. That's something I wish they would fix in a later patch. You know, I was going to say that was a time loss, but I don't think that was actually. Because the other guys still spawn in. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now... <laughs> This is where things get dangerous. Yeah, Travis is not good at CQC. I already had a brief hiccup, but I'm glad I made it back just in time for the uh, bus adventure. Bus 51. I was going to go off and say, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's just me, but I feel like one of these uh, members that we're attacking here looks like uh, a, a member of the Beatles. <laughs> member of the Beatles? One! <laughs> Travis, hello? Next I really want to know how they get into the bus in the first place. Do you think they like they fly into the Yakuza via helicopter? Because like we're going pretty fast on the highway. <laughs> I like to think they're maybe just like hiding out in the luggage compartment and they just like come up through a door in the floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes the most sense. Honestly, they're doing a, a speed. They're just hanging on the on, on the under, undercarriage and yeah, they have a uh, suction cups to get in safely. <laughs> This is another. The bus has moon roots. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say this is another part of the run where it's like if you're losing time, you're just like standing here. It's like, come on, stop nagging me, stop nagging me. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it, it can be a bathroom break. Yes. This and destroy man. You're just standing there. You can. You have a few, just enough time to maybe get some water or something. Yeah. I usually go either here. I think I usually go here. But last time. I think you watched the run where, like, I did the world record and I lost time because I f didn't make it yep. back in time. Yep, after the I, saw <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Hey, world record's a world record. Yeah, it's a good record. He is on this bus for a long time. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> I think I also picked up the safety health for this. Yep, Speedbuster. 
Just because she's so difficult. Yeah, I, when I replayed this on Switch for a brief moment, I actually forgot how this one worked until like a few seconds in, and I was like, oh, right. Yep. So, yeah, oh. this that laser does tons of damage, and we don't want to get hit by it. So, be careful with that laser. Okay, here, uh oh. So, for the folks at home, this boss fight is basically this game's equivalent of like one of those period stages in a Dark Souls 2. Like, it's this boss is at the long end of this corridor, she's shooting this gigantic laser down the way. And I guess on a normal playthrough, you're normally like trying to avoid the laser by uh, ducking back and forth between the alleyway to the buildings on the side. But it looks like Young's doing something a little bit different here to get past this yep. combat. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still waiting for the laser here. I'm not sure about you guys. When are they going to get to the laser factory? <laughs> so the, the head nod I was going to do earlier is... So we obviously long straightway we save time by doing these slashes to traverse the canyon but my timing as a rhythm game player i always try to whenever i'm playing a game like find if it's like a specific rhythm for something just like equate it to a specific bpm from like a, a ddr or like set mania song and the one i found for this that works the best for me when i'm being consistent about it is actually the jumps from possession from DDR. So if any of you in DDR want to do the claps. Oh, that was so that delayed. Was I'm glad I get it. And the core strat that Young is doing here is that this was actually recently found. Yes. It was actually, uh, it was somebody was uh, looking on YouTube, finding glitches, and they saw someone by the name of, I believe, More Eddie on YouTube just be like, hey, I found this glitch. Turns out it was a way to cancel the... the her laser. So all you need to do is uh, any katana. You slash the katana four times, and then you do a uh, like a uh oh a punch or a beat attack. This is looking bad. Ooh, Young got got kind of bad situation here though. That should be good. But yep, just like I said, four slashes and then do a punch or kick. And there's a cutscene trigger right there, so you don't even need to knock down the telephone poles. That was a good, pretty good fight. <laughs> It was okay. The end I mean, was a little dicey. Yes. My last run that I did, I got a perfect. Like, didn't even... So I theorized that you'd have to tank at least one of those hits for the Yakuza that come out at the end and come chase you. But you can sometimes get very lucky and, like, avoid them all together and not have to tank the hit. Yeah, um, and, that, and that technique is very easy. It's... You need... Obviously, you need some timing, but it's pretty forgiving. Yeah. Um, it's very that's, forgiving, absolutely. It, like it's, that's it's, why, like you, mm -hmm. you saw me like, oh, I was mistiming it, like misremembering when the next laser is gonna come. I like slowed down my hits to make sure I had enough time to activate the cancel. And it saves a lot of time. Mm hmm. So there's no major skips in this game, unfortunately, but that saves a minute, pretty much exactly compared to like how you would normally do that. You know the thing. Do you know, on the He's fan? Bumper, sorry, bumper just, crop this season, then. It's <laughs> a compulsion. I'm sorry. If Gene's on the fan, that means we're going to have a good stadium? <laughs> Gene's on the fan. Because stadium, that's a it's a whole heck of a mess. Like It's definitely like something that runners as a whole need to lab a lot more to this get more is, consistent at. Any your runner here, it still vexes me, especially on Bittera. Yep. But we'll see. I have some strats for it, but most of it is just like internal counting. It's like, okay, did I kill the enemies that are mm -hmm. problematic? Can I go to the infield now? <laughs> Sometimes you wait around a little bit longer than you need to just to make sure that they're really not coming back again. I have noticed you have chosen to go with uh, Kravitz Classic for his look today on the stream. So it's interesting <laughs> you brought that up. Because a fellow runner, 55, my first run back that I was doing just to get splits after two years of not doing runs, I was like, how come Travis isn't wearing a custom outfit? I'm like, you know what? Sounds good. I will actually do that for the next run, which I assumed would work. Uh, all you have to do is just make sure he's wearing a different outfit before you uh, finish the, the last fight of the game. Mm-hmm. 
And that's actually... Oh my god. I was trying to do some swag stuff. Um, that's actually not how it works. He will automatically default to whatever he his default uh, clothing is. And that's just be... Wow. <laughs> All right, reset one more time. <laughs> you, 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 want, you want me to explain it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, Young is referring to how uh, he wanted to swap out, uh, you know, a different outfit to Travis, because obviously there's a lot of customizing, and even the Young himself is wearing a shirt that you can find in-game. But in order to change the outfit, let's say on a New Game Plus, you want to start off with a funny outfit, a new outfit, you can't select the real ending because the real ending sets you to the default outfit. Mm. So the only way to start up a new game plus with a new outfit, with your custom outfit, is to select the fake ending where you in turn don't get the real final boss and don't get the real final ending. Oh, is that what it also, is? I don't, I don't know if it was your... I don't know if it was your intentional swag, but the way you slipped the bike across Bad Girl's name when you got there, that was pretty <laughs> swag. Okay. And get used to this for like five minutes. Uh, five? No, it's like three, three and a half if you have a good one. Oh, well, I'm talking to the one and a half minute of time loss that I usually get. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this car is... <laughs> Some yeah. of these enemies, like this guy right here, have take multiple hits, and sometimes they can even take like three, four, five hits. They can really troll and mess up uh, this section. So you always want to make sure, at least in the outfield, that they're all dead before you go into the infield. See, look, that, that guy spawned in. I think that's the last one. We'll find out. Yeah, there are a set amount of enemies here. Oh, nope. Here we go. That's that's the mm. last guy. They do spawn consistently, I guess you could say. Like, they spawn in regular spots, but... Yeah, the, the health is just strange. Sometimes... I, I, I yeah. can't even tell if it's, like, a velocity thing. Like, enemies yeah, no, will, I... will die if you're going at them faster, but only some enemies? Sometimes you can hit an enemy three times. Certain enemies, not even every yes. enemy. It's not just, every enemy. I don't know. It's, but... it's infuriating. Like sometimes, like you'll hit them with the bike, and they just stand there like you did nothing. And it's like, <laughs> how do you get hit by a motorcycle and not feel that? <laughs> it's very like that guy. Time. I'm pretty sure he did not. Yeah, that guy that I just hit on second base, literally did not feel a thing. Just stood there and took it like a champ. And and you can get knocked off. That is of course very bad. Yes, it is. Oh, Let's... I wasn't sure if you actually could on the stage or not. That sucks. Yeah, I've definitely yeah. <laughs> gotten knocked it off during the middle of a run. I'm like, you know what? That's a, that's a run killer right there. Because <laughs> oh. then at that point, at that point, if you get knocked off the bike, it's like you have to kill everybody from scratch. And that's not a huge deal, but if you really did not clean up the outfield before you came to the infield, that's such a huge time loss. Whereas if you're on the bike still after you kill all the infield guys, you can easily just go to the outfield and it doesn't waste that much time. There's also the cutscene where you have to take out your katana. Oh, uh-oh. So it's just, it's a very bad thing if you fall off. And it's happened to me, it's happened to every runner, I think. Okay, so, so there was one guy... Training? What's that? So this is normal is this for spring training? Yeah, normal for spring training. <laughs> Only in the minor leagues. Okay. Oh, okay, that's why. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's everybody. Oh, uh, this the stream has been brought to you Wait, by. Wait, oh no, I'm getting trolled. Choice, stinking beer. Uh, this yeah. guy never takes more than two hits. Oh my goodness. Yeah. There we go. Now that's everybody. There you go. Gets I mean, hey, it wouldn't. Strange. It wouldn't be a true. So, uh, would it be a true speed run if we didn't have one of those "this never happens" moments? <laughs> So Coming like Adrian said, uh, five, three minutes and 30 seconds with an extra 130 <laughs> for t extra time loss. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, we need to do more labbing on that. It's just, yeah, especially on bitter. I don't do as much bitter running these days, yeah. but I'd like to come back. But we're coming up to one of my favorite bosses, Bad Girl. I mean, mm -hmm. probably this is probably maybe like the fan favorite boss slash assassin from this game. I mean, that's 
probably why she got revived. <laughs> and, like, her dad became a character. <laughs> they needed some way to segue into the next entry in the game, or in the series. Yeah, as I say, a game like this is weird, because if you have a character that people really like, the game most likely ends with them dead. Alright, so what are we looking out for here on the Bad girl, girl, she has right? a lot of health and a lot of tricks. You want to get a good balance of, like, stumbling her and parries if you can get them, like, especially on Bitter, it depends on how safe you want to be. She also has a 1-8 KO attack that's... Oh, did I just invoke it? She has a 1-hit KO attack. It's very telegraphed. She's... You might be doing it now. She is. She was doing I got Yeah, I couldn't tell on my screen. So how are you How are you able to get away with this thing? Because like, normally, if you try to go up and take advantage of uh, hitting her... Yeah, so when she's that, crying she's on the ground, you, right? she'll be fake crying if it's a 1-hit KO, or she'll be real crying, which you can hit her. You know when she's fake crying when she has one hand on her bat. That is the one to KO, when she has a hand on the bat. When both of her hands are on her face, that is real crying, you can hit her. Absolutely. And the catch being is that it's such a subtle cue and the game tells you it on the game over screen if you die. And not it does. all the time. But the thing is, is that it's, it's very rare for her to actually do it. That was so clean. That was very good. Good fight. Very nice. She didn't even go nice. back to do hitting her minions into play. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think of that. That that's how good the fight was. So it's it's most of the time like she'll go and she'll. There's no like rhyme or reason for her doing it or not to like summon her minions, but occasionally you'll get a run where she just doesn't go and do it. You got, I think because you had a good pattern with stumbling her and keeping her active, so... Yeah. Also, if you guys didn't notice it, so she did the real fake crying where if you mess up and get too close to her, she will go ahead and uh, one-hit KO, one KO you. However, uh, you can actually hit her if you're far spaced back. And that's something that I... Not sure if it's really worth it. It might save time, because... The range on uh, partially charged low is so wide that you can hit her, back up, hit her, and then do two full uh, two full uh, charged attacks without actually triggering her killing you in one hit. But I just, even though like it is potentially like. Uh, like you can actually hit her like without having to worry about one hit KO. Like you like strafe to the left to see if she has two hands on the bat while doing, or two hands on her face while doing uh, a charge attack. And then it's like, oh yeah, she's doing it, I can go in. To me, it doesn't happen nearly consistent enough to where yeah. you actually like get like positive expected value for it. So I was like, we need to figure out some way to hit her where like it accounts for the fact that she may or may not be fake crying. Fake, real fake crying or fake fake crying is what I call it. <laughs> more often than not, it's the real fake crying. Well, this is a mechanic of that fight I actually did not know, so that's going to be really fun the next time I play this game to look out for that. What, the the fake fake crying? Yeah, I didn't know I didn't know she had like a real cry that was safe to hit. Yep. And here's another fun mechanic hmm. for you, or fun little exploit for you. So uh, when you enter rank one, when you pay the ATM, your bike gets stolen. But... To get around that, to get you a little closer to your destination, rather than running all the way to the rank one entrance, you can actually select a mission at K Entertainment close to where the rank one fight begins, and then you simply quit from it. That will teleport you immediately to that location, and in turn, saves you a ton of running. Yes. So that's been a piece of tech for, well, over 10 years. I believe it was Satoru who used that in their segmented run many, many years ago. Oh, wow. So that's a, that's a tech that works even in the Wii version, then. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. It's core tech. I Every mean, you save, you save less time on the Wii version because of the loading screens, obviously, but it's still a major time save. So 
And I can't believe this is the only time they actually have bike combat in, combat in this game. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see if they actually enjoy it. And this part, uh, you can take damage if you run into things. The boxes, they're the most motorcycle guys. But otherwise, essentially hold the hold the nitro and shake your controller a bit. Oh, you shake it to do that? Oh, well, I mean, I flick it up, but. Oh, okay, interesting. I don't, I don't do that. Oh, I, I guess that's just my Wii. Yeah, I. Memory. <laughs> I was so frustrating from the from like the Wii days of like flicking the controller up to like jump. That once I realized that in this game, I don't know, or in this version of the game, I don't know if you can do it on the Wii originally or not, but like, once I realized that you can just press ZR and you will jump, I'm like, that's way more consistent. I'm not flicking it anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's, yeah. Just, that's just me. I'm, I'm going to flick the controller here. That's just, it's part of the experience. It's, it's the one part of the motion controls I will absolutely ignore. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, Jeez. like, I, I will swear by the motion controls in the original game, but the bike motion control stuff is the one thing that feel, that felt wonky then still feels wonky now. I feel bad for the motorcycle person just a second ago, because you're, you know, you're jumping up in the air, the bike just went right under you and just, just <laughs> like, landed right on top of it. You can't feel bad for the stormtroopers. <laughs> they're out to get you. They're, uh, they're going to be very, very uh, problematic in a bit. Oh, no. Okay, good. It's not doing that. So recently I discovered that you can, like, edge yourself into the wall and, like, not move during this section. And I'm just like, it, it isn't, like, it loses you a little bit of time, but, like, it's very frustrating when it happens. It's like, how do you, how do you get out of it? And it, oh, it, see, kind of like that right yep. there. There you go. I saw it. There's some nuance here, but yeah, it won't it won't end your run unless things go really badly. Yeah, <laughs> I see what you mean. Now I feel a little bad. <laughs> uh oh, go back, uh -oh. guy. Had insurance. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all night. Tip your waitresses. Tip your waitresses. <laughs> So, uh, Mini Speedbuster is currently attacking us. <laughs> Either there, it's Goku? I, I don't know. Just just the laser. Okay, Probably let's see Goku. if I can skip. Yep. That's the, I think that's the, my biggest contribution to this, <laughs> to this game. <laughs> and it only saves, like... Two seconds. <laughs> he messed it up like Adrian did last time. No More Heroes was on. You remember GDQ. that? Yes. I'm not trying to rub it in. I'm really oh, no, not. No, no, no. I just I find it funny you mentioned it. Yeah. If you mess it up, it's like a two minute time loss for it. But I feel like as the guy who who invented that, I kind of have to go for it. Uh, I figured it out now, so no yeah. worries. I I go for it all the time. And here's another level. We have uh, Remnant Psyche Thunder Ryu. Guiding the path, you can run past every enemy here. That was close. <laughs> Thanks, Thunder Ryu. <laughs> if he was, was our mentor, he died in Speedbuster. Spoilers, if you missed that. As you can see, there are treasure boxes that I failed to get throughout the run. <laughs> when I played this on new game and even new game plus when i was originally making the save file for this <laughs> which like eh, i don't feel like getting them it's all good all right this is a section i often get trolled at right here i don't know consistent setup for it let's I just hope either. they're nice i always get hit once I, actually that's good because now i'm out of the i'm out of the way yeah that's that's <laughs> hit you into the right direction that's kind of what you want <laughs> yep i want to slow. get hit in that fight it is too slow to kill them. So you just have to run around them and hope they like you. Oh yes, let us stare menacingly at our old students. Wait, is, is he Or is, did is, you? Is he wearing like is he wearing a flesh flesh colored um button up? Or is that just the skin? Uh, 
flesh color. I think it just kind of was yeah. like his shirt kind of taken on like the ambient He's, lighting, but there is, yeah, there is at least one yeah, shirt it in looks this. Like, it just looks like it's, it's, it's just the skin and it's got collars on it. I was like, what? I mean, it's like you said, there is at least one t-shirt in this game that is just a printing of a man's chest on a shirt. So yeah. it does exist. <laughs> I had to... I had, to, I had to go back and watch it on a different monitor because because of how it looked on my monitor. <laughs> I need to fix the coloring on this monitor now. That definitely tells me that. Speaking of shirts, so earlier when I talked about like picking out a custom outfit for Travis, now that I know that I can do that, I will go watch the <laughs> fake ending and change it for future runs. But I was like, yeah, and you know what? Let's better way to do that than just to spend and cl completely clean out the clothing store. And because of that, I uh, I wasted like in two hours or so because the clothing store gets really expensive. <laughs> so like, like for this run, for a New Game Plus run, you need like $1.5 million at least in order to do it without having to like grind for side missions or anything like that. It's like any, somewhere between 1.5, 1.6. And so, like, everything in the store is, like, 2.2 million. So I had to go and, like, regrind for everything. And I'm like, I was really upset after that because I grinded, I got everything in the store, I picked up a custom outfit, and then beat Henry. And then the the outfit didn't carry over to the new game. I'm like, what, what did I just lose two hours of my life? Oh, no. <laughs> Glad I could help you here. Yes. Now I know I did not lose two hours. And I can now break the world record again with some style. Now we're at rank one. Rank one, baby. My father is who we're fighting. Oh. Ah, darn. Mashing start. Oh, okay, it's Gene. Not to be cute, confused with Gene the cat. The cat. Am I remembering it? Am I misremembering? But isn't his ex-girlfriend also named Jean? Uh, well, well, this is her. Oh, this is this her? No, yes. this is his sister, not his ex-girlfriend. That, that that that's the that's the twist, folks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, half sister, girlfriend. They tell you it in a sped up speech, as the game is uh very liberally making fun of video game endings. And <laughs> Yeah, hil hilariously when she shows up, she's like, I'll explain everything, and then it just fast forwards for a few minutes, and uh, very quickly when this game came out, I remember somebody did slow it down and upload it to YouTube, and it is cool. Uh, I will give a content warning though, it's a bit of a swarthy story, but it's still kind of a cool yeah. uh, thing to go check out if you're a fan of this game and, and Jean, you have not watched it. assuming she behaves, she's actually not too difficult of a fight. Mm -mm. It's She's very easy to manipulate, and she's doing the right thing. She does that combo, you wait to for her to end it, and then you slash her. And oh no, we lost! Oh no! <laughs> but wait, we won! <laughs> so, Adrian, you probably know this more than I do, but do we ever get an explanation for what happens to the hole in Travis's chest? Uh, nope. <laughs> it's just, for all we know, Gene's hand is still embedded into Travis's chest. <laughs> might, po might possess some Metal Gear Solid 2 Ocelot style. Mm. <laughs> and uh, this... I think this is a fight a lot of people I've been looking forward to, but it's it's a fight of endurance, and I know Young might need to focus on this one. Mm, yes and no. Just let us know. You guys can go ahead and talk it up. I'm fine. I did no, say I mean, recently I, I that, like, fight, recently I haven't died to this fight in, like, over a decade since the Wii days, and then I went ahead and died... <laughs> As I was doing World Looking Pace, <laughs> uh, like a couple of runs ago, I should say. First time in like over a decade, I died in this fight. So, yeah, this is the real final boss. This is Henry. He hasn't told yes, us who he is uh, yet, so I'm not going to say our relation to him yet. But oh, I was I was about to say it though because it's great. <laughs> uh, it, 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 I I just want to take a guess. Is he related to Kylo Ren? Because this game came out in 2007. Oh he's no, a, when that movie came out, got a lightsaber that is almost exactly, except for the color of Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Yeah, when that movie came out and they showed off, I think it was in like the first teaser they showed off that hilt, and I was like, oh, that's Henry's sword. He's got <laughs> Henry's sword. <laughs> 
No, he is. Uh, he is. He is Pavitz's handsome, long lost, handsomer twin Irish brother. Mm hmm. And he has a ridiculous amount of health on bitter. And, oh yeah. And reminder that uh, yeah, Young has all of the upgrades here. Has infinite battery as well as max strength. And even then, it's still like if you're playing really well. Like I think my PB is five, six minutes. It's been a while, but. Compared to a lot of fights in this game, are like what? One minute? I'm bitter, even? At yeah, least the early ones. Is another one of those fights like on a casual playthrough, but on, no! a pot of but on a pot of coffee, you'll be here for a while. Yeah. yeah the but goal it's a fun fight. It's a fun one. Yeah, the goal here is to. On bitter, because the parry timing is so hard, even I find it hard to rely on them as much. So you really want to just get charge attacks in and hope that you do not get hit. You can see Young doing the classic, you know, making him stumble strategy. Just, you know, you do one quick slash at the end of their combo. That makes him stumble, gives you uh, the chance to charge. Man, this game looks so good on Switch. I'm so happy I got a re-release. Them harsh shadows, man. <laughs> me too. I, 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 think it, I think it's like, it was really hard for me to find this game because I never played it until the Switch version. <laughs> Older, a lot of the games that do hold up have become a lot more collectible, and for the longest time, these games were tech. going up way in price. And luckily, the Switch version brought them way Yeah, back. and it's, hey, it's under $20. If one there was a show of games I under twenty dollars. I know. <laughs> it, is, it is the poster boy for the perfect bargain bin game <laughs> on the Twitch slash Wii. And I'm I'm just gonna toot my own horn here. I own uh, ten versions of this game, so each one different. Duplicates or each one different. Ooh, does that mean you have like a special like big box yes, version of? Yes, I own fan? two box versions of No More Heroes Two. Anyway. And it's not the runs is about me, it's about young. Just just wanna throw that out there. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so Henry has a one hit KO attack. It's very telegraphed, it's when he does that long charge, and he's doing it again. If you're well right in front of him, you can get hit. And I've actually lost a run to that before. Like it, it's telegraph, yes, hate that attack. But um Well, a one hit KO attack is a one hit KO attack. I'm on the edge of my seat with how much health Young's got here. I know, I was going to do the exact same thing. I think he's good. I'm probably going to grab the backup. I was going to say, I didn't want to say anything, but in case it was in your mind. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm grabbing the backup. Screw this. <laughs> <laughs> you made it this far. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Oh. Uh-oh. We're all on the edge of our seat right now. Right? Even Jack. Oh, nice. You oh, oh, wow. That's, that's time, by the way. That's time, by the way. Nice job. Very oh nice my job. I was literally just right in front of my screen, just seeing how just inches just 
Oh my gosh, boy. It's yeah. easy to die. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were all like, like, like that's just that one move. Oh, you like go off and say one thing you shouldn't say and you, you get distracted for half a second. Why would you bring up something like oh, that? Oh, wow. What a way to end. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure how you feel young, but uh, to me, I think the hardest split is this one, Henry. Just yeah. the battle of endurance. Mm -hmm. The final split after about two hours of running is the worst. It's the hardest split. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's funny because like every boss in this game, besides Henry, is like a minute 30. Even with new Speedbuster strats, it's still like a minute 52 or something like that. Henry, and I was watching uh, your PB for Sweet, Adrian, mm -hmm. and it's like the Henry fight is 24 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's like 5.30 plus in, in this. Yep. He was not playing nice either. I'm not, I was like, oh. like a 6.10. She caused me some trouble, yeah. all right. But all right, well, if, if anyone watched this things. and they were like, uh, you know how women are. Man, I really want to see, I want to learn more, like, really no more heroes, spender. one, two, yeah, or three, or any of those spinoffs, so or any thing, maybe any other with Suda. Where would they go to she's learn more all about life, that? But a good woman. What? I'm going to default that Adrian on that one. Oh, okay. Come yeah. On. Well, uh, Got to gotta plug the Discord as usual, the Suda51 speedrunning Discord. Uh, we have it linked on the No More Heroes uh, speedrun.com page, all the pages, as well as the Killer7 page. But uh, if you want to go there, we're a, we're a, well, not the biggest community. We're a, I would like to say we're a small but resilient community. You know, we have a lot of people that are willing to help you out or are just interested in talking about the game and seeing other people run the game. So, yes, the Suda51 speedrunning Discord. That's what I recommend. Awesome. A um, couple words here for me at the end. Uh, I want to thank Vesper for giving me the opportunity to drop a game that means so much to me during GDQ. It's as it's always been a dream of mine to come on and do a run for y'all. Um, I say this partly jokingly, but as a side plug, shameless side plug, if anyone has any leads on entry-level software development jobs that is proficient in Python after graduating a software engineering boot camp, let me know. You can DM me. DM me on Instagram at YoungBunkCoin, all one word. And then lastly, but most importantly, I don't know if Suda will see this, but I have to try anyway. It's still out there somewhere in Grasshopper Manufacturer's Warehouse or something, <laughs> and you were able to part with it. I would really, really like a roll or two of the No More Heroes toilet <laughs> paper. <laughs> it would mean the world to me. <laughs> it would mean the world to me. Oh my god. I gotta do it. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. What was the yeah, final time? Uh, I think 139. It, it, it's it's saying 140, but I think it was a little late. But um, It's a great time. Yeah. But anyway, it's also... Uh, if anyone wanted to follow any one of y'all, where would they go to follow y'all? Um, honestly, I'm not too active on social media since uh, 2022. Like, the end, I made a new year's revelation and not really use it anymore but i guess you can follow me on twitter at young buckcoin or uh pretty much like young buckcoin on twitter instagram any social media that i'm on it'll be that and a commentator oh well i'm uh i'll go with, you know you, you go ahead go okay. first, well go I, i'm always around i'm always Stream in one or two days a week. Try to do two days a week. Twitch.tv slash AdrianVG. Uh, also on Twitter, AdrianVG1 underscore. I also have a YouTube channel. Same thing, just I'm, I'm using AdrianVG everywhere. So, yeah, I'm not running No More Heroes as much these days. But I'm, you know, I'm always in the loop and I've been doing Let It Die and some Killer 7 lately. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a Suda51 guy. So, want Suda51? I'm your guy. Uh, cut, to cut you off real quick, JC, I forgot. I do have a YouTube channel that I do post on regularly. <laughs> <laughs> all, my, all my runs are on there. I initially did the first uh, No More Heroes 3 speed run, and it's the only run I've done. I just wanted to crap one out to be on the leaderboard, so to be like first. But anyway, uh, I make uh, comedy videos. They're mo more, mostly geared towards the Dance Dance Revolution slash Step Mania community. But I, for the past year, I've been taking improv classes. In a few weeks, I'll be doing sketch, uh, like written sketch. So I haven't made a comedy video in a while. But after that class is done, you can be sure as shit, 
pardon my French, that I will be start making more scripted content, both dance game and not more generalized content as well. It's at Young Buck Coin as well. So <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Go ahead, JC. You can find me online at Sonic9, JCP, on all the channels, Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky, anything that's that matters, really. Uh, I write, I draw. If you're a subscriber to Nintendo Force Magazine, you've probably seen my comics or some articles in there. Um, I'm also the brand manager for the Yeti. So if you're going to be at AGDQ in just a few weeks, stop by, my, stop by the table, the Yeti table. I'll be there if you watch this stream. Say hi and let me know what you thought. I'd love to talk to anybody who watched it. And thanks again for turning out for it and stuff. So yeah, uh, I might be one of the, if you pre-ordered a t-shirt at uh, GDQ, uh, I might be one of the guys handing it to you. So look forward to that. Oh man, if it wasn't for Vegas being the exact same weekend, I would totally be there. <laughs> like I've never been to Vegas before <laughs> and it's just coincidentally the same time. And I'm super displeased not at the fall than anybody else but like mm -hmm. just because of the fact that it's in pittsburgh this year and i love pittsburgh so many friends out there shout outs to the ones of you who are in the chat right now watching me doing the run i wish i could be there but vegas same. vegas baby same well thank you all very much for showcasing that great run but chat don't worry we're not done here at the bargain bin we have another great run of cassette beats coming up next and then afterwards we got express lane with one of my favorite games of 2023, Alan Wake 2. So we got a lot of stuff lined up for you tonight. So stay tuned. We're going to take a small break where we get things set for the next run. This is a good time for you to stretch, you get up, hydrate, etc. While we get things set up for Cassette Beast, stay tuned. Bye. And welcome back to the Bargain Bin. I'm still Midnight Vesper. Hey, if you missed the, the previous runs uh, today or want to see some other runs that may be happening that may have happened in the, in the previous year or coming up, well, don't worry. We have them all on our YouTube channel. You can just head on over to uh, youtube.com slash games done quick. And of course, while you're there, go, you can go ahead and press the like button on the video to subscribe to it. Also, head on over to twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're watching us live on YouTube. To watch our shows live and of course you can also head on over to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to learn more about all the other shows and see what's coming up this week we got some great stuff coming up this week but first let's things let's let's go ahead and check out this great run of cassette beast by uh, yamakazi how are you doing today i am doing really fine thanks a lot for everyone who's actually being here watching. I, I really love this game and I'm really flattered to show to everyone. I'm not sure if everyone knows what it's all about. Cassette Beast is actually a Pokemon-like game. I I think it's that's the, the easy way to define the, the game. But it has a lot of things dif that do different that I think most of people that play Pokemon actually wanted that Pokemon had those things. Uh, I'm going to ex explain a little while I'm doing the run, but first things first, I'm with my friend here, Kazayev, that's going to help me. He's really a great friend and I will not be doing this alone <laughs> without him. <laughs> yeah, uh, hello everyone, I'm Kazayev and um, I'll say sorry in advance because I'll call the monsters Pokemons, probably, and uh, I use Pokemon terms <laughs> a lot, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but I actually <laughs> played the game for three months and I still call them Pokemons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm ready for a Cassette Beast runs. Let's go. Right, that's the any percent seeded category. I'm going to start this with this number, random seeded, right here, that you can see. It has some things that we, we're gonna show it right, right at the start. Uh, let's just start here. Just customize my little character here. But right, I start with two Pokemons, Serenade and Ken Devil, but we're only going to use Serenade for the first part of the run. Uh, Serenade has a, a, a move that actually will have a, sec a second effect that will help a lot us th during the run because it will have a 
80% chance to to hit twice. I think, if I, I remember correctly, I think it will just miss this 80% once in the run. Not anything else. It will always do two hits. Will we, will we abuse the, the, the secondary effect of the the type advantage as well, because this the, this game is actually functions a little different with the type advantage, in, l different in Pokemon. Like just fire is stronger if you hit grass, for example. It actually has a a secondary effect, not just stronger. But without further ado, I'm gonna focus here, not going to 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 this pay that longer. And, and, and I'm gonna to count down five, four, three, two, one, and go. Yeah, let's go. So, first things first, right? So, what seeded means? So, this game, we, we are playing the seeded category, which means uh, we know what stuff the game will give to us. So, as Kawe said before, uh, his speed attack on his Serenade will have an 80% chance of hitting twice. And that's important because we, for reasons we are going to explain later. So another reason why Seeded is important is uh, some loot boxes. So we are going to grab four loot boxes in total in this game. And they have... Uh, we know the loot because we have seeded the game. So we are going to explain the loot as we get the boxes as well. And that's pretty much it. Um, as well as having... So to go to the final part of this game, we need to reach a mirror. And this mirror is always in the same place as well because, because of the seed. But we need... We are going to do uh, a few bosses in the game, the Archangels, which will trigger a cutscene so we can go to this mirror that will go to the last part of the game. So that's pretty much it about uh, this seeded part. And uh, Kawe is going to be trying to do a cutscene skip here. Let's see if he gets it. Oh, no. Okay. That's fine. That's about like three or four seconds. Uh, you can stop the camera from going to Kaylee right there. But it's fine, it's no big deal. And uh, we are going... So the, the first minutes of the game are going to be mostly tutorials. Uh, so we'll be going to fight Spring Hill here. So for Spring Hill we are just... Oh, another thing as well. Uh, you might see we are going to fight uh, as a team, so two people in the party. So Kawe is gonna be doing an action for both him and his friend, and their friends. And uh, this fight is pretty simple. Uh, we are gonna step on the boot on there to lift the thing. Yeah, just a compliment to, to to add what as I've just. Just say to us, uh, the tutorial we just have on a fight actually explains we had AP during the fight. Some Pokemon had 5 AP, some I think 7 or 8, and some 10. This AP is generated every turn, too, every turn. So some, some moves take actually a cost of AP to do, and we actually gonna abuse some some turns to use that as well later on the run because our goal here is actually do a strategy where we transform every single boss in a glass type Pokemon because we whenever a glass type is hit it with a air type like Cinerade here who has speed it stacks a resonance effect whenever it hits three stacks the, the Pokemon or the boss or whenever we're defeating it will instantly be, de be defeated. 
Yeah, so it's very strong. So, um, as Kawhi said in the beginning, um, the Pokemons interact more, not the Pokemons, <laughs> sorry, but the monsters interact uh, with each other more than just weakness and strength. So, as Kawhi said, um, the main thing we're gonna do to kill bosses, and this work on, on bosses, which is pretty crazy. But we are gonna stack. We are gonna turn the enemy Pokemon into glass type, and if it reaches and attack it with wind uh, move types, and whenever you attack, Sorry. stack three uh, wind types in a glass Pokemon, we we instantly defeat him. So it's it's very broken, if you ask me. And uh, it is it is indeed broken. Here's another little skip we do. Here. Nice, well done. Yeah, we actually see two earthquakes right here, and the first earthquake actually takes a, about six, seven seconds. But jumping on a tree, we skip the trigger for the the first cutscene and just watch the, the second. Yeah, and uh, Kawhi. Cassettes is actually uh, our uh, yeah. Sorry, no, no, go <laughs> Cassettes ahead. actually our our pokeballs. Our monster is actually inside our tapes. Uh, so whenever we 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 play the, the the cassette players, our monsters appear. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we are coming up with the first boss fight, which is just a tutorial. But yeah, that uh, one thing uh, we didn't say yet: it's Kawe uh, opened his first box. And the first box of the game has an uh, important move. We are going to be teaching uh, Serenade, which is the random starter. Uh, we are going to bring the random starter later as well. But yeah, this this first uh, fight, Morgante. Uh, so Kawe is going to be fleeing here with the Ken Devil. So Serenade is the purple one with the microphone. And Ken Devil is the one, it's the other one. And uh, we are gonna flee with Ken Devil because uh, we don't really need to hit anything with it. It's faster, we just uh, attack with uh, Serenade. So we are basically just skipping Ken Devil's turn. So fusions, fusions is a thing in this game. Uh, you can fuse uh, the, the monsters. But we are not gonna use that. <laughs> Really, in the run. But, yeah, that's yeah. the only. That's the only <laughs> time we're gonna see a fusion. Yeah, that, that's they are pretty okay in the casual playthrough, but since we are abusing resonance effect, is not that OP as the resonance effect. We, 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 you guys are going to see how OP is actually the strategy we use to to finish the bosses. Yeah, yeah. We are bla we are basically in the start of the run. We are setting up to the wind glass combo, so we can finish the boss uh, really quick. So yeah, a uh, little bit of talking here after the uh, the tutorial. Yeah, a little trivia here. We have uh, another five partners in this game, not just Kaylee. So. And we have a, a relationship mechanic that we can actually just be friends with our partners or actually romance them. It's actually pretty pretty sweet to see some deep connections into our partners here. I assure you this game has a whole thing, a, a lot about Pokemon, but not just that as well, but a lot of... What should I say? A lot of inspirations like Zelda-like exploration, uh, the battles and the music is actually pretty retro, retro style to, to compare the theme of the game. It's, it's really cute and really, really pretty to see a whole, a whole project put up on, like this. Right here we actually will try to skip a cutscene, I think we did it. Ooh, nice. Uh, so yeah. this is not an encounter event. So just gonna flee from it. And now um, Kawe will open the box there, which will have the tree bark tape, which I'll explain later what it does. 
but for now he'll grab the rock. Oh, the rock's up there. Oh, okay, nice, nice save. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what the the rock does is it makes your like hitbox weirder, and uh, and then you can like uh, climb in the the bridge from array you usually couldn't. So. Yeah, we're gonna bring oh. the rock with us here. Oh, so there we go. We, that's what the rock does, basically. <laughs> so it extends your hitbox a little bit. Oh, and uh, nice damage just right now. Yeah, we're gonna be using all around here, and we don't need it anymore. Hey. Hmm. But yeah, the three bark tapes. So the tapes are uh, our pokeballs. So the three bark <laughs> tape makes it so we can capture grass type pokemons uh, a little bit easier and uh, we are going to be using it in a grass type pokemon obviously and uh, yeah we'll see it later it later and yeah we're gonna actually capture two pokemons besides the first one we got in the tutorial to find ourselves a ability might as well compared to the the hms but a little more active in the gameplay. Uh, yeah. Bulletino here is actually give us a a super dash, like you guys was you guys were seeing me dashing. But as we capture Bulletino, our dash will be completely different. Not not just uh, speed wise, but we're gonna use the 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 dash to do some skips as well. But we actually forgot to to. Explain the, the cutscene skip we did early. We you guys see the the woman standing right beside the, the chap there. And if we don't get the actual encounter, we actually need to see her doing a little fight fusing. So it takes a little while to actually see the cutscene. So Yeah. Sorry, Kawe, Kawe is doing some menus here, so <laughs> he's focused. But uh, <laughs> no problem, no problem. So yeah, uh, we actually just got a dash. Uh, you always see, so he's dashing really fast right now. So that's a very useful ability to have. And he's gonna do a really cool trick right now. He's gonna use the post as a ramp. Let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, that saves a lot of time because usually you have to go all around and uh, to enter the city by the other side. But uh, this way we just reach the city a lot faster. So Kawe just bought the glass camouflage. So the glass camouflage will turn together with Brushroom, which is the Felix, uh, Felix Pokemon here. So <laughs> the combo is it's going to be like this. Uh, Brushroom cool. has an ability to turn itself in any type. So we are going to give him the glass camouflage. So he will become the glass type. But the paint swipe ability he has um, will make it so it transfers to the enemy Pokemon his glass type. So another really cool trick here. We are gonna use the rock as a ramp now. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. oh. We can just retry it, so it's fine. Yeah, it's a little tricky right here because I need to actually fall right between the rocks. Get a ride. Ooh, that was a good that, one. That nice, kind of yeah. boost. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah, always interested. Right. Go ahead. Okay, uh, so just explaining. So this is the first time you're going to see the combo. So uh, so the paint swipe will transfer the glass type to the boss. And Kawe, you hit him twice with spit. So he already has two uh, wind attacks on him. So we're going to use the third wind attack here. And when the third stack hits on, he'll just be defeated like that. And yeah, uh, that's it. Since it's a fusion, it, it came out two Pokemon right out of it. Uh, it's not actually two of the different Pokemon that can fuse. They can fuse both of the same as well, as you can see. 
Yeah. And we're gonna defeat them with our Sonic Boom ability because it hits both of them, not one, just one. Yeah, Sonic Boom is really helpful because its animation is really fast, so it's a fast attack, and it hits in area, so it's great for this fight right here. Right, right here we had a bit of an RNG in front of us. Actually, yeah, did it, by the way. <laughs> but we have two problems right here. Our fleeing rate that can be really low if we encounter some bad guys right here because we need to capture our, this pumpkin right here. And our friend can as well attack with a move called jump scare. And it can flinch my mates. If, if, just if he use jump scare on my one that's capturing it, it will cancel cancel the capture and the run. Will, will, it would die, but I just saved, so let's just try. It's actually a good encounter. Yeah, so use you're, the tree bark right here. Yeah, you're gonna use the tree bark tape here. We got on the on the box and. Yeah, it be fine. did actually boost its speed that actually Wait. lows my fling rate. Did you just beat a pumpkin pumpkin pie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did not. It eat it itself. Oh my <laughs> Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, it... Now that I think about it, yeah. Yeah, 15% is <laughs> actually pretty low, so I'm gonna just attack right here. Yeah, so Kawe is going to be attacking to increase the, the the chance to capture it. So why we are capturing? No, it? I, I already captured it. Yeah, I'm trying to flee. That, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, after we capture it, we we are gonna try to flee because we want to capture this this monster only for his overworld ability, actually. So his overworld ability is really strong. It's uh, we are gonna be turning into a grass ball that can climb walls. So it's just a very hand ability as well as the main ability we use for the glitches and the skips that are coming up. It's the rock, that's okay. I'm gonna use that one right here. I'm gonna be using the rock again for extra extended uh, hitboxes. So here uh, a little puzzle with the statues, so we can grab our final box, I believe. And this box has a very powerful uh, move, which is the quick smack, which is basically a quick attack, <laughs> Pokemon's quick attack. So it's a move that has priority. And it's a wind type move, so it can stack the resonance we need to kill bosses. So Yeah, we just got this box right here to open up the station that we need to go right now. Just a little puzzle to solve. Before our first great skip. Yeah, this skip is Wait. really cool. Let's see how it goes. I'll let Koei focus on it a little bit. So basically... Wait. Uh, sorry, what? If you don't mind to explain. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, what Kawe is going to be doing... Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just hold the button to fast travel back to the cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. We can, we can okay. just start back. Yeah. So, Kawe is going to be hitting a trigger there. So, when he hits the trigger, he's going to press pause. And then he's going to play the music song. So... There is all this lore the reason we have to complete a, a song in order to in order to know where the mirror is. So we have this log song in our menu that we are gonna play when we hit the trigger, and that will cancel the trigger, basically. So we can go out of bounds because the trigger to go to the boss is behind. Oops. He, let's see. That looked good. Uh, nice. There we go. First try. Very nice, yes. Yeah, and the trigger for the boss is right behind that little dar, so... 
This skips doing the whole dungeon and uh, grabbing an item to uh, be small and then and, and then you can go through the, that door. What? But yeah, we can do this instead. And uh, here's Alice. And uh, Alice is not going to be different from the other boss. We're going to use glass camouflage, transfer it to Alice. And then we are going to stack three uh, wind type moves. Yeah, the, the order of the two is actually wrong. The Serenade meant to be. was meant to be down. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, actually going to need to restart the run. Oh, uh, okay. run the, uh -huh. the fight. Uh -huh. Yeah, the fight. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, we should be fine. We can just go back. Oh, I need to rest because the grenade is actually eaten. Yeah, we're gonna take a little bit of uh, coffee break in game. So you can rest a little bit. <laughs> Coffee breaks are always good. Oh yeah, we always I, take my, those. I, uh, I'm, I'm growing. I'm learning about coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are actually gonna yeah. use coffee as an item later in the run, so that's nice. But uh, yeah, Kawe is gonna try to skip again. So let's see how it goes. Looked good again. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm Bear, two for two. Really nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to focus as most as I can. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. So yeah, let's go. And now it should be fine. Yeah. What? So there are some menus that uh, Kawe is doing as well to to manip uh, what the the bosses and the, the enemies are gonna do. So all the menus are really important for you to do them uh, exactly as they are. So here Kawe is going to use Spit. And because it has an 80% chance, uh, I believe this one doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Or does. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, she should be almost defeated. We are going to use Quick Attack. A quick smack, and since it has priority, uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, pretty it's much really like wait, that. Wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Yeah, this is supposed to be a boss, okay? Uh, for anyone who didn't play the game, this is like a boss. <laughs> it shouldn't be that fast. <laughs> yeah, this this strat is pretty broken, and as soon as you you understand uh, how. Oh. How it should work, but guys, I it, it really it really makes the game that easy. Even on harder difficulties, the uh, the strat is pretty broken. So yeah. right here, I'm gonna do another little menu. I for earlier the right. yeah. So about the the moves, um, there's shit. There's two moves that uh, I didn't explain yet that we got in the boxes, which is random starter and custom starter. So they both make it so we have a turn zero, which are moves that go before the battle starts. So it's before turn one, we can make it so some moves go goes before turn one, like the battle even starts. So custom yeah, starter... So, so some battles will actually start uh, with two stacks of resonance on, on some bosses. And we just need quick smack and they will be defeated in one turn. Yeah, they, they don't even ha get a chance to play. <laughs> so, yeah. Custom starter will... So this is another trick, by the way, that's going on. Uh, this is uh, a lot easier than uh, the, uh, the previous one. You can just go off bounce like that. And go to the boss area once again, skipping all the, the dungeon. And mm. uh, yeah, this is our friend uh, Popatox. 
Uh, he has a little bit of a gimmick. We have to hit, uh, hit it with uh, the monster in the highlight right there. But yeah, uh, shouldn't be a problem as well. We are going to use the same good strategy. Uh, we flee with uh, Brush Room because once it uses Paint Swipe to give the Glass Camouflage to, to the enemy, it, holds, it no longer has a use basically. So yeah, we just keep fleeing with it. And yeah, two stacks plus quick smack should do the trick. And boom, done. Very nice. That's a great yeah. trick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you for having this, for putting this in the game. We yeah, have yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the statuses that the, the, the type advantage has on each other. It has a lot of secondary effects like metal being covered on poison and, and not actually being poisoned, but can poison other enemies as well. So it has a lot of that kind of little changes to make the battle more active. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really great. Yeah, I should have write this off. I saw a little bit more menuing for uh, money reasons. We are gonna unequip some attacks we don't need for uh, oh. brush room. Tell me this. Yeah. I like how relaxing the music is here, in here too. Ah, uh, the the music in this game is mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Like you don't even have to play the game; you can just listen to the music. Even though I highly advise to play the game as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, just going for the next boss. So. As you all can see, we are pretty much set it up for uh, killing anything in the game. <laughs> so we are just going after the bosses now. And uh, these next bosses are really, really fast. So, But before that, we have to do some platform. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, you guys are going to see the potential of these abilities combined right here with the... Uh... Oh. Oops. With the spike ball, the, the flying one. And we actually have two other abilities. The the magnetic one. We we used to use this ability to reach the top top of the mountain on the 1.2 version of the game. We used a different seed to play as well. Since it's the, the point 1.5 version of the game, we discovered a seed a little more a more faster and that does not require the magnet ability and another one that is actually compared to surf we we can swim oh yeah exactly and uh one thing we didn't say so as kawaii is uh going to this boss room uh we are playing on 30 fps now uh so all the skips we did are oh, easier yeah, we forgot oh. about that yeah yeah <laughs> So we usually play on 60 FPS, but uh, we changed now for 30 FPS. So 30 FPS makes the glitches we just did before uh, a fair amount easier. So we are just going to keep at 30 FPS now because it's, uh, it's a little bit faster. Yeah, some of the tricks we're going to do right before the last boss, we're gonna, it's going to, to, to need to be. 30 FPS to reach it more easier. But I'm going to change just after a little cutscene we have. 6 FPS again. Sweet. Right, right before the end of the game. So yeah, another boss down. Yeah, right here we, we saw the potential of turn 0. We actually stacked 2 Resonance on, on our... Uh, oh. Got the the, the oh. boss name here. Oh, it's um, Babylift. Babylift, yeah. 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 Now we're gonna do our last 
boss before the last boss. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, Morningstar, I believe is the name. Yeah, right here we actually... I'm gonna explain that. Our partners oh, yeah. had a side quest to do, and this town is actually Kaylee's side quest. I'm going to enter with Felix. So that's why I'm going to do a little skip right here. Yeah, so Kawhi right. is going to be doing the same thing. So Dash, uh, play the, the log with the song. And we can enter the city. We shouldn't be allowed here with uh, Felix. Uh, we should only be entering this city with Kaylee. And uh, there's another one, another skip that uh, should skip a cutscene. Let's see if uh, Kawe can get it as well. This one's not required as the Genthiv before, but let's try it. Yeah. So if you miss it, it's fine. No big deal. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't get the buffer right, but okay. We're actually gonna see Kaylee here, but not sure how he's talking to us, but she is. Yeah, Kaylee is, is not on the party, so. But she will show up as uh, she should be there. <laughs> but yeah, this should be the last boss before the last boss. And we are gonna do the same as we always do. Yeah, we got a little cutscene inside as well. Think that long. Oh. oh. Mm, nice. I love how like all the bosses have a completely different aesthetic to them. Yeah, that when I saw the first boss up, I was asking myself, is there gonna be a little like the same, but whenever I whenever I hit another one, it was completely different, <laughs> and that that kind that kind makes me me feel more remarkable bosses. I actually can't remember the design beside the names, but it, it feels really cool to see this kind of design actually used in a pixelated art game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This game does it all, really. It's it's really great. So yeah, Morning Star. Done easy. Very nice. Yeah. So uh, it, it's now we're gonna get a cutscene from our, our little friend. Yeah, there. we're, we're mm -hmm. gonna we're gonna do a a wrong warp to the city. And uh, the prerequisite right, yeah. to, to finish the game will, will trigger. Uh, we did not explain as well, but the triangle head guy right, right here is the, the final boss. He's collecting all the archangels oh, also, to... A rogue warp? <laughs> Just oh, like that. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was a warp. Yeah, the, so there is this wrong warp. Uh, I'm not really sure <laughs> how it works, but it works. So you just go into that tree. And he has. Yeah, uh, I'll try to 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 resume, but it's actually the hitbox of the warp right there. Will it's spit it out when I with the spiked ball, and since that warp and the other warps warps of the stations wasn't meant to be used as normal, they all sent to the zero zero point of this the town. So if you actually manage to enter the the warp point of any station like that, you will be sent to the zero point. Which is... Even if it's inside. Yeah. Which is exactly where we want to be, to trigger the cutscene. But yeah, you are saying something. Kawe, sorry. <laughs> I interrupted you. But yeah. Oh, that's okay. Now we're gonna be a little lore-wise cutscene. Uh, Miss Amber right here is actually an Archangel as well, and she's quite, uh, what's the word for it, quite intimate with Aleph. Uh, and she explains to us Aleph is ex the aspect of, I think it's 
I think it's war, but it's not war. Rebellion. Yeah, rebellion. And it's the, the, the aspect that all humans of the world created with their bad thoughts, as I should say. And it actually, they, it, it, it actually, sorry, it actually oh. <laughs> group up all the, the archangels to invade the other worlds. Uh, we, sh we didn't explain that as well. The game is uh, pretty much an isekai. We actually been sent right here for some weird force. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna focus on the menu right here. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, uh, yeah, some uh, more menuing before the final boss. Uh, this is also for some uh, manipulations with the final boss. Uh, so this final boss we must uh, do exactly... So it says unscripted fight, but uh, it must go exactly our way. Like, we can't miss anything uh, menu-wise or input-wise, basically when doing the attacks but uh, yeah we are gonna go into warp here and the song, the final song would be telling us that you have to throw something at a log uh, but since we know where the mirror is already we don't really need the song to fully know where it is so there is the mirror And let's go to the final boss. I was really good with the reflection on that. I know it's a mirror and I know it's weird to say, but like they did a really good job with like depth of field with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, good though. Engine did really great or great work for the devs to work with the project. Yes. It's, it is pretty sweet and oh. the art is actually, I, it wasn't, it, 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 it didn't get me the first time, but I, Took a great love for this game since I started playing, and it's one of the greatest games I played last year. And you should all try it as well. Yeah, and while while Kawe was saying that, he just did uh, some out of bounds <laughs> to go to the final boss again. <laughs> so we don't really need to do the dungeon. Uh, the grass ball have our backs. So we can go out of bounds. And uh, yeah, a little bit more I'd of like, lore. I like the <laughs> sass when I heard the word hey, as though the main boss is sitting there like, I'm trying to explore, I'm trying to explain what's going on. Why are you just skipping all the dialogue? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually don't care what you say. We're just going <laughs> to shoot you with some glass types. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna just quick kill. Should be fine. And yeah, uh, this boss is not gonna be any different. So it's the final boss here. Um, this boss is actually dangerous because, as I said, uh, if it goes wrong, it can change its type. And if it changes, yeah. If the I type, do anything, if I do anything different with Brusher on a second turn, we will turn another type besides Glass, and we'll. Actually, you my 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 strat. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to go exactly as we want, but it did. So we are good to go to the second phase here of the boss. And whoa, he's gonna fuse oh. everyone. Oh That's no! So dangerous, so strong. Yeah, intimidating. Right. Yeah, no, not so much. So yeah, once again, uh, glass type. And we we do have more bosses in the game. We we actually have, I, I, if I remember correctly, it's 16 archangels to fight. And if you f if you fight them all, they will all show up right here in the last fight and fuse with Aleph. It will gain his and they moves as well. Nice, there we go. 
So we're gonna defeat the boss and he's gonna regenerate its HP. And uh, soon you're gonna be going to the last phase of the boss. Yeah, right here he smashes our tapes to cancel our powers to do some cassette things. But Morgante right here, the first boss, is actually Aleph X wife and is trying to helping us to to stop Aleph for destroying other worlds. What? Why? And we actually fuse it with Morgante right here. Good design. Yeah. By oh. the way. Hmm, really cool. Yes. <laughs> And yeah, the, this last phase is just basically an auto scroller. So we bought two coffee, two ice lattes. And we are going to be using here because usually you have to eat for the APs to build up. But since you got the coffees, uh, the coffees give you two AP each time you use them. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go. We're going to use Coda Morgana, which does uh, quite a bit of damage. Yeah. And yeah, the run is basically done. So timing will be when we finish talking with uh Oh, what's her name? Uh, Mrs. Ember. Ember, Mrs. Ember, exactly. Uh, so the timer on the upper left there will stop as well. So Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much cassette piece. Very nice. Yeah, guys. Thanks a lot to having me here, having Kazaya here. Thanks a lot for the invite as well, Vesper. Uh, I feel a little sorry because I'm not actually used to so showcase time. my runs on English, uh, as you all could see for the entire run. I had my friend here, Kazaya, who is a little more used, but... Not, right, we... we the future has we choked it a little, but we tried time. our best since we yep. we are not used to it. Y'all did a fantastic <laughs> job, all of y'all. You know, <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. the The love for this game needs to be shown. The, this game is really pretty, pretty sweet. It has a a lot of good little stories inside of it. As I said before, with the partners, it's a cool vibe with the soundtracks. Someone said before on the chat, and I didn't actually could say that, but whenever you fuse within a fight, the theme song go vocals, so it actually has a pretty great job with the soundtrack, since it's with all themed with cassettes and all that. Uh, sorry that I could not explain that hard uh, about the tricks and other things as well. It's really a lot going on with the run, with the menuing, since I, I'm not using to talk in, in, in English and explain why while I'm doing the run, it's a little harder for me to, to do everything right. Well, like I said, you did a fantastic, both of you did a fantastic okay. job with the commentary, you know, kudos all around. Uh, if, any, if anyone was like wanting to know more about learning about the run of Cassette Beasts, I know there's the, um, like the almost like a seed, not not the seeded category, but more like a seed category for like I think random. Yeah, items. yeah. Where would they go to find more information about Cassette Beast as a speedrun? Guys, you can go to the Beat in Studios Discord. That's actually the devs group of the in the Discords. We have Lena's uh, in Inception, that is uh, another game of the studio as well. The speedrunning community is focused all there. I, I really need to thank the community as well to came up with all the science that they do with the game because see that it needs to be researched, needs to be a lot of time to, to actually compile all the, the route and, and all the things. Uh, the material we had is, is pretty accessible. It's, it, it's a really easy to go and to learn run. It's not that hard to master some tricks as well. Uh, since we explained earlier, the 30 FPS, FPS makes them a little quite easier to, to do it. E and yeah, the I actually want to shout out the runners of this game. Garfield the Lightning that has the world record. I want to shout out Sushi de Linguiça that is another Brazilian fellow that runs the game. 
and it actually it inspires me so much to, to keep running the game with some friends like that because as I said before the I had really much love for this game it really makes me my experience with a lot of other things that I played before compared to Pokemon or not it really is a great game it it's one of my top three games of the last year just losing to great titles like Zelda and Baldur's Gate but guys this is a must go game the love for this must be shown and it's and it's shown here and uh finally if anyone wanted to follow y'all where would they head off to yeah guys I'm go to Kawaii Mikaze pretty much everywhere Twitter I use a lot I stream not much as usual as I would like us. Yeah, full-time work is, <laughs> I get that. is on the way. I get, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I do actually run not, not, any, not just Cassette B, sorry, but a lot of other games. Uh, but I'm focusing right now on this one because it, it really is a, a chill game to play. It really, it really is fun to see the strats working besides the RNG that I made that I said before that actually made made my my time a lot harder sometimes but yeah guys I think that's it I actually I wanted to thank as well because I ever being here uh, if it wasn't he <laughs> I it, it, would, it would be a lot more difficult for me because <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's my first time showcasing in English. It's my first time showcasing in, in a Games Done Quick event. And I thank you a lot again, Vesper, for the invite. Thank you a lot for everyone who does this work. Goes on and on for the years to come. Because speed runs is what we love and is what we're going to keep doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, cause eh? Yeah, so uh, I don't I don't actually run the game. So uh, everything I know about the game, uh, I have seen from Kawe playing. So yeah, definitely give Kawe uh, some love. And uh, but you can find me on Twitch, uh, the same Nick uh, Kazeev. Uh, I'll be mostly speedrunning this month, uh, Sea of Stars. So if you are into Ooh, that, that's good. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can find me on Definitely. Twitch. And uh, you can find me on Twitter as well. Kazaev Z. With the Z in the end, because someone took Kazaev, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. And uh, thank you, Kawe, for the, the invite. And thank you, Thanks GDQ here, and man. Vesper, for the invite as well. Of course, of course. And thank you all for showcasing that amazing, amazing run. For those that are in chat, do not worry. We're, while the bargain bin may be closing its doors, Express Lane is coming up next, showcasing one of my favorite run games of 2023, Alan Wake 2. Big fan of the uh, old guards, old, old gods of Asgard. Big fan. I'm glad they're in that game. But hey, speaking of games, don't forget, awesome games done quick. 2024, January 14th to the 21st. Prize submissions closed tonight, though. So, if you have a crafty or unique gaming prize that you'd like to submit, head on over to gamesunquick.com for more information. Like I said, they close tonight. That'll do it for me here. Uh, but do not, like I said, do not feel bad. We're going to get things set up for Express Lane. So this is a great time to get up, stretch, get some water, get some snacks, hydrate, etc., etc. Thank you all very much, and we'll see you later here at the Bargain Bin. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.